Welcome to Condor Gentile Season 2, Episode 24. Number 24? Episode 24. How do I say that? Episode 24. Epi- mm, episode 24. <laughs> 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 if you didn't know the form of the heart, we're going to be pushing up your ass. Truth will essentially just reveal itself to the audience. Can you say that I'm predisposed to life sex things? Quit being a fag. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers, we have gin and tonics. We're yeah. dieting friends now. Mm-hmm. You didn't use a straw. Mm. Damn it. Did we have to do it? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who said that. I don't know who that was. Yeah, there, there was a comment that says don't use the straw, so I kind of want to aggressively Yeah, they were like, straws straw. are gay, don't use straws. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. It <laughs> was gross. Um, <laughs> anyway... We should bullshit for a while till we're intoxicated. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what you want to bullshit about. Cow Rittenhouse. Ooh, should we talk about it? Yeah. This is coming out Tuesday, so it's not going to be super relevant. Oh, still. But still. Yeah, it's, I'm sure people are still going to talk about it. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, it's worth it. People might want to hear what we have to say about it. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think we really need to start with defining what a hero is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have comments on that? Yeah, I, I just think they went too far. <laughs> it's kind of like, okay, well... I mean, yeah, you could say that he didn't do anything wrong, but then to try to flip it and... Not doing something wrong is heroic. Yeah, that doesn't make him a hero. Well, I mean, yeah, he he wasn't... Again, he wasn't doing anything heroic. I guess the, the most thing the you tri- could say... The, the charges were bullshit. Right, the charges yes. were, yeah. I mean, I guess him going out there uh, um, supplying medical assistance to people, you could maybe argue as heroic. It it's is sac- brave. It's sacrificial. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, it, um, yeah, it's brave. But I think to the level of hero, I, I don't know. I just, yeah. what's, what's a hero? How do we define that? Mm. I don't know how I would define that. Yeah, no, I know. I guess I, I, you I, have to win something. Yeah. I think it has to be, win, you have but, to accomplish a goal. To but be but, a but hero, I, I also don't think it can be selfish. It can't be self-serving. It would have to be sacrificial. Yeah, of absolutely. Victory. Well, it has to be a sacrifice of this. Yeah. And, and overcoming fear in doing so there's like a right. there's an element of courage involved it's of like course, cur- yeah, yeah. courageous sacrifice yeah in the name of something but you also have to like accomplish you it. actually have to be a com- yeah yeah because yeah, that's what it is to be heroic yeah you can be sacrificial yeah you can you could be brave by overcoming your own fears and stuff but that that doesn't make you a hero yeah you i mean he fought say, off three yeah, guys he fought people. off three four dudes yeah, yeah and did it perfectly yes he yeah. didn't make a mistake right that's fantastic and i think salvation has to be an aspect of it like yeah. you run into a burning building and you save a family of five by killing them out <laughs> then you're a hero yeah right? because yeah that's what i what did i, what did I say yeah. on twitter earlier today like for self-defense to be heroic purely oh, yeah. it or it, like what to be like purely serve the self would have to be heroic like that would have to be because just, right, just yes. acting in self-defense like yeah, this, uh, yeah. you could be innocent yes. you can be whatever and, and you could be brave like all of these said, positive yeah. things yeah. i mean to really defend yourself against something like that especially at yes. that age is brave yeah, yeah and it's especially it's impressive to do it all correctly but it heroic is he didn't. He didn't yes. save all of the raped boys from the exactly, sex offender. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there wasn't like a, there wasn't like a person being. I mean, maybe I don't, potentially you could yeah, say those yeah. people were going to go on to do other things, like right. whatever. But like, yeah, but to be a hero now, because another quality I, I know it probably sounded a bit superficial, but you have to be strong. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a, you know that the hero is somebody who has immense. Well, strength. you're kind of a platonic ideal a little bit. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> or, or, or just Bonnie Tyler. You know, I need a hero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to. You have to be like an, yeah, I, an gotta ideal. Got to be strong. Um, got to be ready. Hero, to fight. Hero, heroism is almost like mythological. It's it almost is, yeah. like there has to be the mythological levels of sacrifice and courage. Yes, like, and courage and strength, and, and like you just. It's not a dig at him. It's a dig at people who are flipping. Because that's the problem I have is that everybody, it, we only know how to react now. And like, apparently the only, like, like, wow, you're a fucking menace. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thirsty. Anyway. So easy to drink. Um, yeah. So I, I felt, but I mean, besides the hero part, I am pretty happy that he actually. Oh, the system. I mean, the system worked, right? 
this time. I know. That's the thing. It's not yeah. a win. That's not no, a win. Yeah. I think it has to be more of a consistent yeah. victory after victory. I mean, this is a start, I think, of hopefully something's correcting itself. Hopefully. Yeah. So next um, time, hopefully the election is not rigged. <laughs> <laughs> All stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but as of right now, it doesn't, it doesn't fully give me confidence in the system yet. It shouldn't. Right. Yeah. But it does give me hope. Yeah. And that's pretty I mean, it, it's cool to see the system work right. Yeah. But that's the first time it's worked right in... Since OJ. Yeah. <laughs> For years? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like... So what I was saying is like... It, but my problem with the whole hero thing, calling him a hero and stuff, it's like, again, I don't have any issue. He was not guilty of murder, yeah. obviously. He was yeah, yeah. obviously acting purely in self-defense, and he did a perfect, like, perfect job of doing yeah. so. Um, but the problem with calling him a hero, it's just like a reaction to people saying he's a villain. Yeah, yeah. It's like, there isn't, because people villainize him and say, oh, he took a gun there to kill people. He wanted to murder people. And like, yeah, yeah. oh, he crossed state lines and all this stuff. And like, yeah, oh, yeah. he had a gun. He wanted to shoot people. He's a <laughs> right, murderer. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it was intent. And like, yeah. showing up with a weapon is intent or something. Um, right. Or so, I mean, it's just because you, you defend yourself well um, doesn't make you yeah. a murderer. Yeah, it doesn't. It's like, yeah, he had an effective weapon. He used it properly. And yeah, he was getting he beat won. with it. People pointing guns at him. He was getting beat over the head with a skateboard. Yeah. He was kicked in the face. It's, it's, like, like, it's, like, a, it's like getting mad yeah. at somebody because he works out every day and then he kicks people's ass when they try to beat him up. Yeah. It's like, it's unfair. He came in there with muscles. It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair. He was in there with an AR-15. Yeah, okay. He did it well. <laughs> that's um, the point. But that just seems like an issue that like people want to call him a murderer and a villain and evil and a a part of the problem quote unquote yeah. and then everybody's reaction is to say no he's a hero and like he's yes. like to like totally flip the other side and it's like you don't have to do that yeah you don't have to go that because far. that's as absurd yes yeah it is maybe it's not as absurd um uh, it, it's, it gets there but i yeah i mean it, i think it kind of is anybody on the left when they hear that just think that the people on the right are insane and I think it's kind of spoke. insane. Yeah, you know? it's like yeah, that's that's a crazy statement. Calm yeah. down. <laughs> you know, he did, he did it right. Calm and, down. Yeah, um, Ooh, he's not just innocent. He's a fucking hero. He's the greatest human being that ever lived. And that was I was. Yeah. Oh, I shouldn't even talk about it. <laughs> Should I? So this to. was not the drama that I, the Twitter drama yeah, I yeah, was yeah. involved in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was the thing. Is I thought it was an interesting point that a member of the fed post made hmm. um i d i am not participating in any twitter drama right now i am just offering to jeremy an interesting thought to analyze <laughs> i am not promoting any people or ideas <laughs> on the podcast i'm just this is a so one of the things that people got angry at several twitter users for saying was that one he wasn't a hero mm -hmm. they they maybe went a little too far in saying that he shouldn't have been there at all you know the mm -hmm. whole thing I, it's, it's very muddy but um right, yeah. or that he's not to be respected because i think it, it, it's respectable to defend yourself perfectly in the way they do they can right, respect yeah. someone for doing it whatever i'm not going to try to interpret any of that so much was said i don't know but someone made the point that if Rittenhouse were um, convicted, he would just become the George Floyd for the right because there'd mm. be murals of Kyle Rittenhouse. He'd be, he'd be martyred and canonized just like yeah. George Floyd would, yes. you know, yeah, yeah. I don't know how, what you think of that um, because George mm -hmm. Floyd was obviously like a drug addict right. degenerate yes. who got killed, but people had, had constructed Maybe. a, what, I mean, I, I think most researchers say that it was probably just fentanyl poisoning, so he wasn't even killed. No, I know. I just, yeah, he yeah, was, he, he literally, he died. Yeah. He died at, on the scene. Yeah. From what was the excited delirium or whatever, yeah, whatever it was. Delirium, there you go, whatever yeah. it is. Um, but a narrative was constructed around him to martyr, make him a martyr and canonize him as like a progressive saint. Yeah. And then if Rittenhouse were convicted, which was obviously would have been unjust or whatever right, yeah. he would be not necessarily to the same degree or with this yeah. with less validity or the same validity or whatever canonized and martyred on the right. And like there'd be murals of him and stuff. And like yeah, it was yeah. an interesting point. I don't necessarily know how much I agree with it, Yeah, but that was the, 
the beef. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, I do think there's a point there, but, but I think that goes to a larger point that I think we've made multiple times with, um, uh, with, with discussing the way that I think politics has become the religion of the modern period. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So whether you're on the left or the right, I think people yeah. on the right just say that it's always just people on the left that make it it's religious. Like, no, that's no, the they, funny thing is when I'm when I'm making fun of people yeah. on Twitter or wherever yeah, for yeah. the way in which they talk about being a GOP straight ticket voter is yeah. cool. It's like you're literally just as ideologically possessed as people to do that with yes. Democrats. Yeah. And it, it's it's like maybe a funny performative thing to do is like an own the libs thing, but it's like mm-hmm. The Republican Party has had has like generated figures that I like better than Democrats in the last several yes, years. But yeah. like it's I don't understand how it's not just the same kind of machine politics that the Democrat like right, of yeah. the Democrats. I don't get Yeah, yeah. I don't get how it's better to like, mm-hmm. oh, I only vote for Republicans because that's cool. Yeah. It's like that Yeah, and you're you're it. just participating in the same right, system. Yes, yeah, yeah. And people like me, I I, I would say that the GOP has not really produced that many political leaders. The GOP did like. not produce Donald Trump, no. and that's the thing people don't get. Yes, he reinvented Exactly, it. yeah. He did not produce like, they did It not. is Trump who I like. The GOP could go to hell all that I care. Mm, yes. If Trump made his own party, I would go to that party. And it seems like to assume that Trump even has that much sway in the, the Republican Party even now is a little yeah. naive. Right, yeah. Like, no establishment Republicans don't really like they Trump like still. Him, yeah. Because he doesn't go with them. I mean, he doesn't do what they. What he they don't. Say. He doesn't like the machine politics, he and that's yeah. why people justifiably like Donald Trump. But it's yeah. weird to, in a post-Trump world, yeah. just suddenly become a GOP guy. Yes. Yeah. I, I I honestly think that without Trump, the GOP would probably have died. Yeah. Like I I I really firmly believe that, and I think that if he were to pull out and make his own party. The GOP would lose probably fifty percent of its voters, if not eighty. Because no. I, I, like, what is he ranking right now? I think they did that recent poll. Mm-hmm. I think he's like seventy percent, isn't he, for um, for 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 re-election with the GOP? Who would who would vote for him? Yeah, seventy percent of the GOP. Because he's the only he's the only exciting politician. He is, yeah, at all. Yep. <laughs> and, 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 and I really do think who is anyone it, excited about? Who what? Who is a yes. Democrat anyone's excited about? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And, and Name think, another Republican anyone's excited about. Yeah, the only other one is like DeSantis. And even then, I'm I think just he kinda... ranks twelve percent. I mean, I mean, you're talking about seventy percent to twelve percent DeSantis. I know. I mean, it's it's not the same. I think the only people that really like DeSantis are people that are in very, Florida. Are, are people in Florida, but also <laughs> I think even people in Florida would rather go with Trump. But I think it's it's the more old fashioned GOPers. Yeah, the the ones that never really liked Trump, uh-huh. but they are just. Um, but they just would prefer him over Biden. Yeah. And I think that that is only about 12% of the GOP. I really do think the GOP has simply changed. It's not, it's not what, what it was before Trump. And, and when you look Which at, means it's not the GOP because the GOP was yes. a nickname. It was right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, <laughs> um, and, and yeah, what, 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 exi- what existed before him, they were dying so f- fucking rapidly um, that, if there was any other candidate that ran in that year, he, they would not have won. Jeb would not have beat anybody. No. Right. Um, I like Cruz personality wise, but like he wouldn't win. Like he, no. Yeah. No, I, 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 think I love, I, I love watching him grill people in Congress and stuff. Oh, yeah. Cause he's a prosecutor. He is. Yes. I like that. I think it's funny, mm-hmm. but he wouldn't, he, yeah, he's I, not charismatic I, enough no, to be he's president. Not. And I think a large part of the being president is just being a figurehead. And, um, well, that's actually the job. Yes. Yeah. And if so, you read the piece of paper, that's the right. Job. Yes. And he, he's not a really good figurehead. He's he, he'll be maybe a good VP. No, oh, Ted Cruz would be a fantastic. Yeah. Ooh, imagine a Trump Cruz. No, oh, I know. Yeah. Ticket. Yes. That might be interesting. With that one girl. Did you see her? That um chick who was lambasting the, Ooh, yes. what did she call the jihad um, member of the squad? The jihad squad. <laughs> Like, if you pick someone like her... The Jihad Squad. I mean, um, I think Trump and her would, like, roll. It would... Just, it would I mean, she was hilarious. And just, like, holy She's shit. yelling over the person trying to tell her yeah, her time's up. Oh, yeah. yeah. What's her name? Yeah, I can't remember, but... If, if we if we could have her and then Trump someone things, be like, excuse me, excuse me. And then she just, like, goes off and um, yeah. just like, talks louder. Jihad 
squad. And she's, her her last name's name. Bobert or something. Yeah, it? she's young and attractive. I mean, she, I think she'll be very, very well. Lauren Bobert. Mm-hmm. She looks like Sarah Palin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the younger Sarah Palin, yeah. Yeah, there she is. She literally looks like Sarah. My, <laughs> my grandmother should come back from the dead and do her glasses. <laughs> yeah, she's swarthy. I know. Ooh, this is not a good picture of her. Oh, she's wearing a vest underneath her shirt. She just looks pregnant. Oh, oh. yeah. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, someone like her would be good. Um, she's kind of got a horse smile a little bit. Like, Yeah. But yeah, still, whatever, whatever. Yeah. I mean, he can't go back with Pence. Pence was kind of a pussy and a traitor. And so, <laughs> just, you know, you got to ditch Pence. Pence was way too establishment, yeah. He was, yeah. Yeah, go Do you remember his debate with Kamala? Yes, yeah. <laughs> the fly. The fly. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I don't know. Like, I. I mean, to go back to what we're talking about, I do think people on the right are just as religious. About their politics. Yeah, about politics as, as people on the left. Mm-hmm. And there's very, very few that I think aren't that way. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Like it just, I'm I'm not with the Republican Party. I don't I don't I don't. I just I find it very dorky. I find it very. It just feels very. I think the word is reactionary, and like, I I don't mean that as like a funny thing. I just it's literally. Yeah. A lot of our new rivals and things, you know, like they like literally call themselves reactionaries and stuff. I'm like, right? Yeah. Um. It's just weird. It's it's weird to me to just be really unapologetically supportive of the GOP just because you hate Democrats mm-hmm. in this very weird, ideologically possessed kind of way. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just I talk know. about Trump. Like, just talk about Trump. Exactly. That's fine. That's yes. less dorky. Yeah. It's like just. I know. I know. It's 2021, mm-hmm. almost 2022. Yeah. He's not president. He's not been president for a year. Whatever. Just yeah. if you well, just like Trump, again. just yeah, say. No. Yeah, he will be. It's fine. Yeah, just <laughs> just say it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and, and, and I think like the other thing that that kind of a bottom line before we go into yeah. the novel is um. Is what I've seen more online lately has been a. Almost. praising of oneself for being irrational and that i find just, you just mean on in, on twitter on yeah on twitter everywhere, yeah, yeah everywhere. Everywhere. comments on youtube or whatever like if, I, if i'm watching videos and i read some of the comments I'm you like, mean like if you're watching like a daily wire thing, yes like yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. and and it, there's there's seeming to be this phrase that people are, are, are starting to say where they're just saying that you are being too rational and um and that just it's 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 so profoundly stupid. Like like people saying like, oh, nihilism's too rational. Like, ni- like that, nihilism yes, yeah. suffers from too much reason. Yes, yeah. And and you can't reason is not something that can have an excess. Because to be so, what does it mean to be rational? Is to is it is to be rational to recognize reality as it is essentially to understand reality to understand yes i i think to understand at least to propose it to have propositional propositions but to be that, rational means that you are you are proposing something in that is true is in line with reality yeah it is, is in line with reality yeah. yeah and so to say that you're too rational which is to say that a proposition is too true yeah. It's like nothing can, it's something that is true. Nihilism cannot, suffers from being too true. Yes. You can't have an excess of truth. Do they mean that though? So let's analyze mm-hmm. that really quick. So if yeah. someone says that's too, nihilism's too rational, are they saying, I wonder if there's like a little bit of a psychological game going on where it's saying yeah. like, you're too correct and I can't handle it because life actually has no meaning. Because a lot of these people, when you say, yeah. when you say, when they say stuff like that, mm-hmm. you're being too rational. They tend to be very, very relative in their thinking. They do, yes. Um, but which I, me, te- I mean, technically means they're nihilists, but yeah, which know, we could yeah. <laughs> we could address but, too. But <laughs> <laughs> but but I think the other thing is that they normally then attribute you to not really being human. It, it's almost as if like they you're th- lacking a human experience, yeah, a yeah, dimension it, of experience. Or yes, something. yeah, yeah. That you're being robotic when you're being too rational. And it, it's it's just such a stupid statement. It's like, it's to, it's so so is reason and ra- so is reason synonymous with rationality? Yes. Yeah. So to say 
So what is the teleological function of the human mind is to reason. To reason. Yeah. To reason. Yeah, to reason, yeah. So to say that you're being too reasonable, you're being too human. You're being too human, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I was getting. Yeah. I mean, being rational animal, the one thing that distinguishes us from other animals is our ability to reason. Mm-hmm. And so um, so being rational and you're saying you're in excess of it, then you're saying you're being excessively human. Yeah. And it's, you're it's, manifesting too much of your nature. Yes, as a person. yes yeah. <laughs> and, and so the, the, the entire idea, I think, is ridiculous. And um, and the fact that they're praising themselves for this, it's it's... It's almost as as if you would meet somebody praising themselves for being impotent and having a pencil dick. Like, you, know, like, you know, hey, look at me. I'm irrational and I have a tiny penis. It's like, <laughs> like, why would that be something that, that you are holding as a virtue? There is no virtue in irrationality. There is no virtue in a tiny penis. Um, so you shouldn't be exalting that as, an, as a good and degrading um yeah. and, and de- degrading large cocked rational people and it, it, and it is frustrating because like i've <laughs> big, noticed <laughs> big dick rationality we're, I, <laughs> we're big dicked smart people yeah <laughs> big dick rationality <laughs> i could do that we could talk about the novel secondarily but yeah talk about what I'm just thinking, she just said that should be the title, and I'm kind of like, I kind of want that. Oh, <laughs> yes. Big dick rationality. Yeah, because that is another thing, is that when you begin to make a dick joke, it's always those nerds who are just like, you know, well, you could just go make another penis joke. It's like, yeah, I will. I'm going to make a dick joke. I got a big dick. You got a small dick. Let's go at it. It's like, I, I just, I don't care anymore. <laughs> they, they made it stigmatized. It's like, like these you know, jockey men, people that work out, people that, that played sports, you know, a, a large part of their life, they ha- it's almost as they have to be ashamed of it. Mm-hmm. So look at me. Yeah, I, I work out and I have a big dick and, and I can't make fun of you because I'm going to make you feel bad. It's like, fuck, fuck it. You know, <laughs> if you can think you're rational, you got a big dick, you should just show it. Be like, this is this is it. And, and finally, just, just stop with the stop with the bullshit. It's a good thing. It's a good thing to be rational. It's a good thing to express truth. It's a good thing to have a large cock and please women. <laughs> These are good things that, that people should not be ashamed about. And whenever now I see people say stuff on Twitter about being too rational, I'm like, okay, you got a tiny dick. That's, that, that, that's what I'm going to go at. Okay, tiny dick. It's fine. You should do that. You've been more active. Yeah. You should just be a menace. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah that's been on my mind <laughs> no it really bothers me because it's always relativists saying that oh it is yeah yeah um i'm trying to find my group chat or i want to find um snoopy so did you see my new... You saw my new picture on Twitter. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> did you think it was funny? Jigglypuff with big tits. <laughs> <laughs> Trains are great. Snoopy is giving me a hard time. I'm... Okay. I'm just... I'm just... I'll tell... I'll okay. tell him later okay. that I'm calling calling him out for making fun of me and my <laughs> beautiful <laughs> Jigglypuff with big tits. He's giving you a hard time for that one. <laughs> Um, I just got a DM. I can't believe you made Big t- Jigglypuff your hobby. <laughs> like, no, I, t- I told you I was doing that. I was running it by you to see if you thought it was funny or not. <laughs> what was the response? Let me find it. I have my my text messages here. <laughs> so, what did you even think? I said, let me run something by you <laughs> and then shoot. And then I went, I said that. And I said, what about this? And then I get, Grant. And I'm like, I'm screaming, laughing at work. And then Snoopy goes, why you send me this? I don't know. And I said, no, it's my new Avi was singing what you thought. And then it's got an LOL. And then no thoughts were shared. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> Jiggly tits. Like it's, <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah, it fits. Fits the name, the character. So if it's super gay. Yes. yes. <laughs> you thought it was funny. Yeah. The fact that it has a kamikaze headband and there's an explosion and everything. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> It'll go back to Thomas. Yeah, eventually. I know. Yeah, yeah. I'll get bored of this. Yeah. But keep, right now, keep it on for now, I literally couldn't stop laughing. I had to step out of the building laughing at work. <laughs> 
Because Marcus, friend is of the, the pod. One? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I was at work, and normally, I mean, I've photoshopped my own headbands onto my whatever because that's my thing is the kamikaze thing. Um, and I just texted him. I was like, hey. I really, because I had been sending that to group chats and stuff, just <laughs> to be hilarious. You have you have one more tonic water worth of an actual gin and tonic. Oh shit! Okay, that, yeah, I'll, I'll drink this next one slowly. Well, and then you can have gin. Okay, just with ice. We have just a whole to let, let the ice melt. Oh yeah. Here I'm gonna get more. Yeah. Um, but I was at work and I'm sitting there like antsy, and I'm yeah. like, because I I I t- I don't remember what it was. I tweeted. It was like none of you will ever understand me. And it's just the picture. Did you leave up in the big tent? <laughs> I'm really glad you find it as funny as I do. <laughs> like none of you will ever understand me and everybody yeah. like liked it, but I kept doing it. And then Marcus texts me and he's like, you really like big tit Jigglypuff, don't you? <laughs> and I was like, I really, really need to see a kamikaze headband on big, big tit Jigglypuff. <laughs> will you do that for me? And he's like, you know, I'll do anything for you. I was like, okay. <laughs> so we, photoshops the headband on and i was laughing so hard i had to step outside (laughs) nice it's so (laughs) stupid (laughs) and people are like why do you like this so much and i'm like i like aqua teen like what are you talking about why do (laughs) i like this (laughs) oh my god anyway um do we have anything else funny to talk about no i don't think i'm gonna cry I was crying in the car. I, okay, I, I like wet, I, I wept like seven different times. Yeah, partial getting to the text. Okay, I'm sure the listeners. Like I wish I had my hard movie. copy here. It's at home. Yeah, I have two. I bought two. Oh, okay. Because I was I have. Well, when my... was the first time you read it? So we should say with this. Mm-hmm. So this book is um. Uh, to live. To live. Uh, what is it? Is it? Hoche, 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 hoche. Hocher, I don't remember what the word is. Yeah. Walter means a chuglance. Walter Bama Chu May Walter Lao Can you say to live with that accent? <laughs> <laughs> that's literally to leave. <laughs> to leave. That's more that's I, I can do I can do Japanese, I can do Korean, mm. and I can do like Southeast Asian. I can, I don't know what Chinese accent. Oh, okay. I don't know if I don't know what actual Chinaman well enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, I don't want to see this. Do you know how to get the screen to not turn off automatically really quick? Yes. How? What's the setting? Um, with the uh, uh, light bulb. I, I think they changed the icon now. It is for... Um, There's no light bulb. Damn it. I don't remember what it's called. Um, was it, it wasn't it's the display the, one. No. It's for the sleep mode. There's literally a sleep mode one? Yeah, it's it's battery. Oh, it has a battery now. Oh, it's battery. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. oh. And then battery. <coughs> wow. Turn off display after never. It yes. says never. Yeah. But it's still turning my display off. Oh, there's another option <sighs> for um... optimized battery charging. No. Slightly dim. Hard drives to sleep impossible. Yeah, that one turn off. Hard drives to sleep impossible. Yeah, don't don't leave that on. And they, that's we're good. It won't turn off again. And there is the rest on never wake for network access, put hard disk to sleep impossible. Nope. Yep. And then everything should just be on never. Okay. Cause I, I can hit shut down on my mm-hmm. own. I don't need it to turn off. I know, okay. Yeah. Okay. We're done. Um, one thing I will say about the MacBooks, I don't like that the keyboard lights won't stay on automatically anymore. You have to like keep them I know, on. Yeah, That's yeah. very annoying yeah. that there's no setting for that. I just want them on sometimes. I don't think so. I just want them. I just want them on yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Anyway, um, so To Live by Yu Hua. Hua Chi. I don't remember. Is it Hua or Hua? Hua Chi. Hua Chi. I like how your entire face changes the moment you Hua-chi. speak. Hua Chi. Hua Chi. You turn Asian all of a sudden. I'm going to start doing like the two things. Nothing more. Thank you, my Just do a whole episode in Japanese. Yeah. No, 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 um, <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> so it's a so the history of this book so it's it's from 1992 93 i think mm-hmm. um yu hua is my favorite chinese writer um and for i i want to i want to explain why yeah. i because i wanted to i mentioned it last week after we were done recording or something yeah, yeah. you're like you just want to do that 
Yeah. Because we were going to do a, a a different thing that we should do next week. It's like yeah, yeah, we'll do it next week. We'll do it next week, but um, I don't want to even say this, this is a, a good break. Text. Yes, I just yeah. I just wanted I just wanted to cover something beautiful that mm-hmm. I really liked that I could share with Jeremy. Yeah. Whatever he got out of it. Yeah. yeah. And just do something nice because mm-hmm. the last two weeks. Yeah. Um, the Foucault thing, the Polya thing. I, I I enjoyed the Polya quite a bit more than the the Foucault. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um. But it just, it didn't, I didn't leave with anything. Yes. It was yeah. just kind of pure analysis. And I just was mm-hmm. like, I, I couldn't really tell you why we discussed it. Yeah, yeah. Except to like dunk on, we weren't dunking on it, but you know, yeah. at all. It was very measured and no, nice. Yeah, but like it, I just it, was, it was just, a rational critique of her work. Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. Both a good and I a, wanted to do that because I hadn't heard enough people like critiquing it. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, generally, um, whether it's online or in at the university or whatever, a lot of the time you're just kind of told to read something and just not analyzing and just read it. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I'm, I'm tired of being told to read Polya and not analyze it. That's stupid. I know. I was like, why yeah. would you not do that? You, yeah. You just hate learning things. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I just, you know, we should do that. But anyway, so to live by Yu Hua, mm-hmm. um, Yu Hua is my favorite writer. He is, I don't remember the other people's names. There's like a gang of writers um, that kind of came up during the post-Mao Rev- Reformation in China. So Mao died in 1976, I believe. Yeah. Um, and in that, the time after that, in the late 70s, early 80s, in through the through the 90s, there was kind of a movement of writers who were anti they weren't necessarily all anti-communist but they were all just you know there was just kind of a, a like a reactionary movement against the great leap forward and the cultural yeah. revolution and stuff and um he was one of those people um this book is really artfully anti-communist mm-hmm. but in a really subtle nice narrative kind of way right this book was pretty immediately banned in china so is, does he live in the U.S.? Or no, does... he's Chinese. Really? Yeah, I know. I don't and know. They I didn't kill him. No. Wow. After this book, especially in the nineties. Yeah, 90s, I know. Yeah. Um, um, he wrote one of my other favorite books I've ever read is China in Ten Words. It's a um, it's both he he does a lot of essay writing now, but it's a, it's very autobiographical. Mm. Um, so China in Ten Words is both a memoir of his experience growing up during the Cultural Revolution. Yeah. But also a history and a critique what, what, what years was Mao's revolution the 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 cultural revolution was 66 to 76 so it was like a 10 year thing mm. um the great leap forward was the late 60s the um the communist revolution was i believe i think that it was finished in 1949 okay. like chiang hai shek i think left in 1949 yeah, yeah. like fled to taiwan and stuff and mm. um before China was just kind of a sh- badly organized shithole for decades before that. Right. Yeah. Um, it was essentially just like a, a trade center for like all the European powers and Europe right. in, in Asia and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very badly organized and not mm. c- centralized power was difficult to manifest. And yeah. <clears throat> so the communists were, it was, it was ripe for the taking for the communists, but, um, yeah. Um, to live, I guess I should kind of explain what it is. Um, it's the there's an unnamed narrator um, who is tasked by the Chinese government to go throughout the countryside, and this would probably be right around the late '80s, early '90s that this yeah. narrative would have taken place. The like meta narrative of the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. He's tasked with like going around the rural communities and like collecting information about like local rituals and like culture and stuff um and then he comes across this man with an ox and then the guy just like divulges his whole life story to him and it's right. just this whole life story yeah, yeah and um what what were your what do you what did what do you think of it i'm curious to know what you think of it because you said it was good yeah it was a good book um, i mean i i like i mean the, the story is just interesting I, you know it has a lot of those classical um i guess uh narratives that kind of transcend most cultures like mm-hmm. you're going to find in ever you can find in jewish culture and the yep, yep. roman culture yeah and uh, I, I guess the chinese culture which is like like that you know the you know in the beginning where he 
was young and his family was rich and so he was basically like the prodigal son he was just fucking women i think he saw how often he had the fat prostitute he'd ride yeah, around the fat prostitute. Yes, yes, yes. yeah and he and essentially kind of lost everything because of gambling yeah he gambled all his money away yeah yeah and so then he became poor longer is the guy's name longer, yeah, yeah. If i remember the name yeah. um so i mean I, I just found it interesting because it does it, it's it's just, it's just a very accurate depiction of human behavior it's very human. It's, yeah. yeah. Um, and so whenever you, whenever you see a story like that, it's like you immediately begin to sympathize with even the, the degeneracy of uh, the main uh, character, you know, yeah. whoever, yeah. And, yeah, everybody of everybody. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's not a, there's not a character I outright dislike. A yeah, na- exactly, there's not a yeah. named character you dislike. Mm-hmm, right. Um, so is it Shu Fugue was the guy's name? Mm-hmm. So it's Fugue of the Shu family. He's yeah. a he's a young rich guy who's married a beautiful woman mm-hmm. who's who, who is beats. who's way too good for him. <laughs> yes. um, she's the she's day. the daughter of a merchant in town mm-hmm. and Fugue's father they his they they say answers I don't know how many generations over yeah. over how many generations they um accumulated like I'm trying to remember what a moo is. I think it's like three fourths of an anchor or something. They have like 200 moo of land. And then his mm-hmm. father before him gambles away half of it. Yeah. Yeah. So he set the precedent for his son mm-hmm. and he, so then Fugue develops a, so he literally they say going whoring. He develops a mm-hmm. whoring habit yes, <laughs> and he yeah. goes and just like fucks women and hangs out with prostitutes and stuff in yeah, town, yeah. like openly and everyone in town knows it. Cause yeah, that's yeah. A, that was a thing at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially in East Asia. Mm-hmm. Um, and one, he, he starts going to, was it the house of, I don't remember the name of the, the whorehouse where all the men would go to gamble, but there's like, they've been playing mm, yeah, dice yeah, and yeah, cards and stuff. Yeah. And there was longer was like, um, a dice player and he mm-hmm. he he what he he has they're like gambling till the early hours of the morning mm-hmm. and Jajin the the guy's wife shows up and yeah she's like you have to come home with me now just come mm-hmm. home with me and he beats her no matter how hard he beats her she just sits there and is like just come home with me like don't don't yeah, do it, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. which is beautiful that makes yeah. me so extremely emotional yeah yeah that scene um she gets dragged off and he's sweating because he's so nervous so the guy he's gambling against hands him a towel or has somebody hand him a hot towel while he's wiping his face swaps the dice and then mm-hmm. loads the game and then Fugue gambles all their mo- the money away and they mm-hmm. lose everything yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, what a idiot. I know and it's like there's it's in the whole book there's this like kind of sense of comedy there is yeah but like it because traditional comedy is like not happy Mm-hmm. it's like what's the what's the comedy is where somebody does everything wrong and comes out on top yeah yeah and then tragedy is where someone somebody does everything right and then dies or like tra- <laughs> like doesn't yeah yeah you know? but um so the, i really liked the scene where fugue's father when it came because he kept beating his son for losing money and stuff yeah, and like yeah. beating the shit out of him with his shoes and stuff and yeah. it's all very asian <laughs> the way, they, the way that it. they attack their family yeah. members and stuff um but um i really like the scene where, where where when it really came down to the wire and his son had actually mm-hmm. um gambled away all their money he mm-hmm. just just he just kind of resigns himself to it and pays the debt that his son incurs and then dies yeah. on the shit pile yes <laughs> and it's like that that part I really I really enjoy that yeah um because it seems like around Fugue everybody when it comes down to it does the right thing mm-hmm. but it still doesn't work out yeah there's a, yeah. there's a beautiful sense of futility to the whole thing yes, which is yeah. extremely East East Asian I would yeah. think it's not super that's kind of the most um, Chinese element mm-hmm. of the whole thing is that no matter what anybody does everybody still dies anyway and like yeah. they're still just you know, kind of a dust in the wind thing. Yes, um, yeah. Were there any moments that you particularly enjoyed that you think are worth discussing? Um, it has a lot, yeah. it, it does, it spends a lot of time discussing like a father's responsibility to his family. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And the way that no matter what he does, he can't ever be enough or something yeah. like do enough for his family for them to right. really thrive the way he wants them to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which I figured would resonate with you in a, in a way. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I mean, like, like I said, I, I think it's just a very accurate depiction and narrative of human behavior in that way. Uh, and even the dichotomy that um, <clears throat> that thing kind of exists with with the masculine and his, uh, and I guess his duties mm -hmm. when he... The, the the way that the relationship between husband and wife is mm -hmm. depicted in it is yeah. gorgeous. Right, yeah, yeah. Um there's a moment or I guess yeah, we can we can discuss it out of chronological order. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. really matter. There's a moment you know where um Jajen, the his wife so so it's Fukue, mm -hmm. Jajen is his wife, and then Feng Xia and Young Qing. Young Young Qin. Yo Ching, Yo Ching, sorry. I'm a little alcoholed. I have to remember their names. Okay. Yo Ching, so there's Feng Xiao's their mute daughter, mm -hmm. and then Yo Ching is their son. Yeah. Um, and Jia Jin is in like horrible health, but she like hobbles her way into her, into town to her father's house, and then she yeah. comes back, and they're all weeping because they have a little tiny bag of rice. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. Um, the, he, there's a line in it. Again, I don't have my hard copy which really irritates me. I thought it was my car, but yeah, um, yeah. essentially that Jia Jin was literally just weeping because she had something to cook for her family. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, little, like that's beautiful. Like that's yes. That's extremely accurate. Yeah. Um, I think so. And beautiful that there's just all of these moments where the father is always concerned with providing things and then the mother mm -hmm. is always concerned with not being able to nurture her children enough right yeah um yeah and yeah yeah it's it's pretty it's i like that part i, I also do like the the aspect of like, like the physical violence he does against her oh no i know yeah and uh, and and over time he learns to not do it right anymore. yes yeah. exactly yeah and i and i think because um what has been lost with like Western, especially American women, I think is the lack of beating mm -hmm. because it doesn't allow. <laughs> you're not promoting wife beating, but you're. Well, I, I kind of am. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I think, I think it gives, it gives an opportunity for the woman to grow in virtue. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think when you, when you see her taking the beatings um, and still being courageous enough and being um, supportive enough to well, to, yeah. to, to all the good for him yeah. it is an act of like servitude mm -hmm. love that I don't, I just don't think you keep really get. I think the wife is my favorite character in the yes, thing. Yes, yeah. Um it, she's she's kind of the central right, yeah. pillar and, and, of good in the and, whole and thing. I think I think now just like western women are just bratty when you really think about it and I think you whack them a little bit yes I think part of it's because they don't nobody beats them <laughs> you know, they, they, have, they have no expectation there's that, no actual threat of... yes that if I behave this way I'm going to get smacked in the face and um, and, and I think when you see that so, in, so here's a question really. yeah. do you think it's worse to yell at a woman or just smack her worse because there's a lot of men that yell at women yeah but that that just builds up to fire like, like part of the masculine ability is to physically dominate them mm -hmm. and so when you act when you do that physical it's the same thing like when you're spanking a child mm -hmm. is is when you can physically dominate them and show them you know you don't do this because i'm, I'm, I'm gonna hit you that tends to help the child grow in virtue mm -hmm. and that's normally what you want you don't want to hit them because you're punishing them you want to hit them so they could grow in virtue mm -hmm. and and i think that's that, that's a huge that's a huge area of description of it, the the relationship between Fugue and Yo, Yo exactly. Ching is his, is the fact that Yo Ching was physically afraid of his father yes. and wincing and there were moments where Fugue like when he hits him with the the broom in the ass yes he went too far yeah, and, of and course, literally yeah. left his son black and blue and like he yeah. couldn't do well in school cuz he couldn't sit cuz his ass yes. was so bad and like yeah. you know and there's moments it's Again, the, the descriptive, that's the, I think the thing I like about Yu Hua so much is that he's willing, he's, or he's able, and not just him, but the people who translate it. Yes. It's spectacular. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. Um, he's able to convey as much meaning really to me as like Russian novelists of the 19th century are, mm -hmm. but without nearly as much words. Yes. It's yeah. very, very stripped down and yeah. every, every single sentence is a masterpiece. Which I like. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I've read it twice, and then we just listened to the audiobook. Yeah. You've listened to it, which, like, we know you can't read hardly. So, like, <laughs> that's fine. I don't. Yeah, I really yeah, yeah. think that you're 
if you listen to it, you're retaining the same information, right, whatever, yeah, especially yeah. if it's a good reader. Yeah, who I yeah. think this guy who reads the he, audio yeah, book was, of yeah, it yeah. is really good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that was the other aspect I really like was the violence with the father and the son. Mm-hmm. I, I think for the same reason is that you do have this, mm-hmm. th- this fear. And, and I think this fear many times what allows one to grow into virtue because mm-hmm. it's, it's like, it doesn't necessarily cause it. I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm not making that claim, mm-hmm. but I'm making the more general claim that that that, that it aids it. it. It helps you. It gives you the opportunity to grow in that sense. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and the fact that the book kind of just explicitly talks about it, even just like the fear of death, like and everything. One of the moments I like literally. I was at work. That work was so slow today that I could just yeah. sit and listen to it and not do anything. Yeah. One of the moments that made me absolutely just like I had to like yeah. step. I had to leave again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because I was so emotional, was you know that Yoching has the two lambs mm-hmm. that he cares for, and then are eventually when the the town is made into a a commune and they divvy up and the communists yeah. divvy up all their stuff, they they have the giant shed of communal animals, so that he he yeah. he had to forfeit his animals, his his two yeah. lambs, and then but he, he still goes every day and then feeds them grass and stuff, whatever. But then the the town slaughters them, and then he's mm-hmm. bereft that his lambs were killed, and yeah, yeah. eaten and stuff. <clears throat> and then after a few times that Fu- like Fugue had made a huge scene at the school, because um, he he what he bought candy for his son, but then he went to yeah. the school because um, he knows he's really hard on his son and he wants to show him little little acts of love and stuff that are just just tender. Yeah. So he goes into town and he buys him like a, like a few pieces of candy, which at this time in communist China was a big deal. And he goes to the school and to surprise him in front of everybody, here's some candy stuff, just yeah. like a big thing for him. He sees that his son is messing around in class and they literally had to give it, give away their daughter so that he could go to school. So yes. he flips yeah. out and goes in and whacks her, yeah. makes a hu- or whacks him, makes a huge scene. The teachers get yeah. mad at him. So his son is just like totally embarrassed and hates his dad for making yeah. a scene and the whole thing. But <clears throat> to make it up for him, he goes into town and buys a lamb mm-hmm. as like a thing. Yeah. You know, like the lamb was a huge thing between was, the father yeah. and son, which is super mythological. Like I know. That's, right. Yeah. It's yeah. a big, that's like Isaac and, yeah, and exactly, Abraham. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's big, what I mean. It's like, yeah, <laughs> it's you find so good. Um, I, I think the one, the one scene and, and I think, the the, diff, the most difficult part for me was I was doing this while I, I was listening to it while I was like, you know, scanning photos and everything. Yeah. And so it was like, I couldn't fully immerse myself emotionally as I could have if I was just listening to normal speed yeah. and just closing my eyes and imagining yeah. things. But um, the one part that I did have to change it to normal speed was when he was giving away his mute daughter. Like that, that was, yeah, that was the hardest scene. And I know as a yeah. father, that would be. Yes. Yeah. But but but, again, but that was the one that almost got you. Oh, like if yeah, you were definitely. gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like if I was if I was in a right setting, and not scanning film, mm-hmm. that 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 would have gotten you. Just more. bam. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what. So, I really really want to talk about the part where he's in the uh, conscripted into war and they're in the tunnels. Also, I think right, that was yeah. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. part. That's probably one of my favorite. Yeah. Parts. Um. So he at one point he goes into town to find a doctor for his mother. And in that, during this period of time in China, they would have um, battalions of nationalists, like Chiang Kai shek's troops, yeah. and they would just randomly conscript people off the street. Yes. And yeah. so walking around the street was a little hairy because you might they like if there was a cannon battalion or something, they'd literally be like, "Hey, pull that cannon," and then you just yes. you just be gone. Yeah. You might die in war, and no one would ever know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was because it's you know it's a nationalist. They were extremely nationalist mm-hmm. at the time, and. Um, you were just kind of expected to right. jump up and fight in at, in wartime. Yeah. You just weren't. You did, it, there was no concern whether or not anybody knew you were gone or whatever. Yeah. But um, he so he's gone for two years, and then when he finally gets back, it turns out that his daughter was um suffered a high fever, mm-hmm. and as a, it was so high, it like made her deaf and mute. She became yeah. deaf, and she couldn't talk. She couldn't right. really make sound with her voice anymore. Yeah. It was that. It was that extreme. Yeah. So there's a concern throughout the whole thing that, <clears throat> I mean, in China and just whatever, is that the traditional, um, no, I don't want to say traditional, the proper goal of a father and a mother mm-hmm. is to see their daughter to finding a man to exactly, take yeah. care of her as she ought be yeah or become a nun or whatever like there's <laughs> yeah, I know, right, right, you yeah, want yeah. to see your daughter in a find order. a vocation of yeah. some yeah 
and there's the scene where they finally, or you mean the giving the daughter away to the family, to the family to mm. which one? There's two times where they give right, her away. Yeah, they're both. They would both be different. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Just pick one kind of thing. Yeah, or? just pick one. Yeah. Okay, so there is the scene where they finally find a guy to marry her, mm-hmm. and he's it's um, Wan Shi mm-hmm. or Wan Shi. I don't remember his last name. Wan Shi is his name, and he's a he's a porter in the city, but he's got a head that. Yeah. Like, that was really funny. There's multiple lines where he, um, the, is it the team captain that came by and was like, Hey, I found a wife for Feng Xia. Yeah. And it's cause they, they knew they weren't going to be able to take care of Feng Xia in their older age. And mm-hmm. they wanted her to be married off, but she's deaf and mute. She's beautiful, but she's deaf and mute. Right, no one yeah, wants yeah. her. They were, there was another time where they were, you know, they were trying to give her off as like a, somebody else's daughter, like find a family that would be willing, exactly, needed yeah. a daughter and would, yeah. that could be, but nobody wanted her cause she couldn't talk. Right. She yeah, couldn't yeah, hear. Yeah. But then they find this like otherwise attractive guy who literally has a neck that can't stand up. Yes. And yeah. He has to lift his shoulder to like look around. <laughs> yeah. And, um, there's multiple, so there's multiple moments in rapid succession where he's like, um, like, I don't know if, I think it was the team leaders like, Hey, I found somebody to marry Feng Xia. Um, and he like didn't believe it, and then and then the team the team captain was like, "Oh yeah, he has a head that can't stand up." And then they're like, "Then I knew it was true." <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. And when he that told me that, funny, I knew yeah. that he was actually someone that wanted to marry my dad's yeah. new daughter because he was disfigured. <laughs> um, but there, that scene where she's being carried away in the marriage procession, and right, she's yeah. just watching back and weeping as she yeah. leaves her parents. Yes, yeah. Um, but there's the moment. Which one were you talking about? The, the previous one? one? Yeah, yeah. So talk about that one. No, I, Do you I, think, remember you're, it? I think you're a better describer than okay, I. Okay. You've read it much more times than I did. Yes. I, 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 this I is literally, this is my favorite work of fiction. Of yes, all time. yeah, yeah. Um, there's, then I'll give my comment of what okay, I found. So yeah. there's, so Feng Xia is deaf and mute. And she spends her days working with her father in the fields, helping him cut grass and stuff. She has her own little scythe and basket and stuff. And she goes out and works while he works. Cause they have their five move of land mm-hmm. and they're, she just, it's him and her kind of as a tag team working the fields yeah. and stuff. Um, but they want Yo Ching to go to school mm-hmm. um, to study and become successful in that way if possible. But the only way that they could afford to do that and not all starve to death is if they give Feng Xiao away. Yeah. Um, so they're, they just go around town and there's like a bunch of people who everybody's like, no, we don't want her. She's deaf and mute. And like, you know, and like it's, that's reasonable. They're like everybody, right. that was kind of a thing that you would trade people around to families. It's like, if yeah. they don't have a son, you could possibly spare a son. They could, you right, know, there's yeah, like, yeah. it's family trading and stuff. And it's like mm-hmm. family, they, um, China maintained feudal family politics for a lot longer yeah. than the West did. Yeah. You know, and we don't talk about this right now, yeah. but you know what, what's, what's interesting is yeah. that, um, so since the natives um derive from that, the natives do the same thing even until today. But it's very weird. Yeah, we should talk about that sometime. Yeah. Um, but the so they decide they're gonna give Feng Xiao away, which of course the mother's really not happy about. Mm-hmm. Um and so they find two families. One of them they want a daughter. And then the other one, the other family is they need someone. It's like elderly people who need someone to take care of them. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to do a little heavy on this one. Um, I could probably make you one more if you want it heavy <laughs> when you're done. Um, so the people who want a daughter, they go to the house and then they like her. But once they find out that she's deaf and they're like, we like her, but then they walk out yeah. of the house. Yeah. So they don't want her cause she's deaf and mute. But so then the last option is that these elderly people, these old people need, they don't have a daughter and they just need someone to take care of them in their old age. They yeah. don't, as long as she works hard, they don't care if she yeah. can talk or hear or whatever. So there's the moment when the guy comes to take her away and Fuque tries to get out of it by saying what the day that she's supposed to be given away to the other family, he picks up his work equipment. He's like, I'm going to go work in the field. Don't, don't let me see her given away. Yeah. Yeah. But then, he looks over and she's standing there and silently weeping. I know. Yeah. <laughs> as, as, so he, she knew what was, yes, yeah. he, she knew what was going on. Yeah. So he has to stand there and watch her like just cause she can't weep. 
Yeah. She can't cry, but just tears roll down her face with her yeah. mouth open like somebody who is. So yeah. she just silently yes, is yeah, weeping yeah. while she's getting led away from her dad. And yeah. then he flips out at the wife and he's like, I told you not to let her over here. Yeah. yeah. And this whole thing. Yeah. That, 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 that part for me was just kind of hard. Cause I, I can't imagine going through with that. Mm-hmm. Like that, that's just, yeah. That, that, it, it, but, but again, it really shows like that strength of masculinity that, you know, when, when you are attempting to all the good for the family, the sacrifices you have, because of that you have to give. Because many times, I, I, I don't think people here in the West think of it that way, but a lot of times our affection towards our loved ones, whether it's kids or a spouse, mm-hmm. um, a brother or, or a mother, whatever, <clears throat> is a very selfish one. It's that... And that we just, I like how they make me feel when yes, they're around. Like yeah. I need them around. I want them around, but you're not really yeah. thinking of the good, yeah. um, uh, really. And so it's you know, going through that scene, I, I, it just you know that that was just kind of that was rough. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that was, for for me that was one of the roughest things because um, you know the um, and then 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 what? Quite a while because Yo Ching refuses. That's when that's when he starts beating his son because. Yeah. Yo Ching is going to start school, <clears throat> but he, he just like they're around the dinner table after she leaves. And he's like, I want my sister. <clears throat> and then he's like, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to school. I just want my sister. Yeah. And then he has to start beating his son. Cause his son yeah. won't just go to school. Yeah. Cause, um, they literally, they were too poor to me. They were too poor to feed as many mouths as were needed if they wanted their son to go to school and they figured yeah. that the, they would have a better life if the daughter went to live for live with a m- wealthier family that could take care of her better mm-hmm. and if Yochin could go to school and have an opportunity to do something for the state or whatever right yeah um and she like after a while she like runs back Mm-hmm. and she she like runs she like runs away and ends up home and yeah, they like yeah. they keep her for a night and then he there's that scene where he walks her back yes yeah but then as he's like rubbing her feet she like as like we're kind of near when they get there he um he's like rubbing her feet and stuff and they're just having this like intimate moment of like father mm-hmm. and son and then or not father and son father and daughter and then right when they get there he sets her down to like look her over make sure she looks good for the family and he like rubs her face and then she rubs his. And then it's the moment where he, she puts her hand on his face and he's like, I, I can't, I can't do it again. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> and, then yeah, he, yeah. and then he just like walks her back. Yeah. And I think the line is like, ev- even if we all have to starve to death, I'm not giving Feng Shui away again. Yeah. Because <laughs> again, like as a father who, you know, has uh, too many daughters. And it's amazing to see a character it's, go from like the original character, yeah. the original person to mm-hmm. be a man of like that much I know. strength of will I know, yeah. and goodwill yes, is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, cause it, cause yeah, it's, 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 it would seriously be the hardest thing to ever do. It's, is when you, you, I don't know. It's yeah. Like I said, that, that scene for me was, yeah, that's, yeah, that was the hardest. That's one. rough. Mm-hmm. Um, should we talk about the, the tunnel scene? Sure. Yeah. I've actually mentioned this one. Yeah. Yeah. In, was it the sex extravaganza episode? It might be like number 11. Okay, yeah. This is number 60. Yes. So a while <laughs> We're ago. literally 50 episodes yeah. away from the last time I mentioned it. I don't remember what it when it was, but um so he my one of my one of the most and I don't know if I like it as much because it's just men. Mm-hmm. There's no feminine quality to the whole part. Yeah. Um yeah, I can do another one for you. Um one of my one of my favorite parts of the whole thing is um, when he's conscripted into the army, mm-hmm. um, the national was forced army. to be. Yeah, he was he was the most conscripted. He yeah. just he's. Um, he makes friends with Old Chuen and Chang Shun, I think is his name. Yeah. Um, so he he's. So I'm trying to think of what it is. So they make their way to a village, and they're they're the they're one of the cannon cannon mm-hmm. regiments or whatever. So that's the thing. Yeah. It's literally the there's the scene with the so what he has to go into town to find his um a doctor for his mother, and he sees a kid trying to knock on a door, and he can't get the knocker to move. Mm-hmm. So he's like, oh okay, I'll go help the kid, and he knocks on the door. 
to this like rich person's house yeah. and then the kid's like run like he's like you know like um, yeah, yeah. ding dong ditch or whatever it's called yeah. um i thought it was called like knocking <laughs> that's <laughs> another one <laughs> <laughs> um but um um he so he ends up standing outside kind of dumbfounded and the servant comes out and he's like you're fucking poor get out of here what are you doing here? Yeah. and then while that interaction's happening the the nationalist regiment comes up and there he's like hey pull this cannon the commander yeah. um something commander unit commander something commander um and they they like almost kill the servant for trying to run away, but he's a bad shot, so he doesn't yeah. hit him. You kind of you kind of get that the commander guy's a doofus. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, but they end up dragging these cannons hundreds of miles away. Mm-hmm. So he he to in an attempt to get a doctor for his mother is conscripted into the army and taken away for years. Yeah, which is would be horrible yes it's yeah. literally i can't i i'm I'll, i i can't imagine as a father any worse thing happening to you yeah, yeah. <laughs> no one ever hears from you again yeah, i know <laughs> so but there's a moment where they come up on this village and there's tunnels that's that have been dug for the like um like foxholes and stuff and they come up on this village and they they station the cannons but they don't set they they don't set them up yet and they're not firing and they're waiting and they just are surrounded by communist troops and they are there for like months. Yeah. And this is one of the, this is like, there's multiple things, multiple, um, narrative elements or narrative. I don't know what what you'd say. Um, scenarios Mm -hmm. where it's just dumb and futile. It's like, they're just in these tunnels and everybody's just hanging out and starving to death in these tunnels. They're not fighting. They're not doing anything. Um, they start taking down all of the, like they, they have rice supplies. There's so much rice in the tunnels they're using as beds <laughs> and they run out of fire. They run out of wood to make fire, to cook the rice faster than they run out of rice. So they start tearing down the, the buildings in the village to burn, to cook rice. It's yeah. one of the more surreal moments. Right. Yes, it's very yeah. weird. It like it doesn't is. really make sense as like a battle scenario. Yeah. It's very dreamlike in its presentation. Do, do, do you think a lot of it was just like a criticism of communism? Oh yeah. Yeah. I guess that's what it's oh, yeah, yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like the, the whole the, thing, the whole book is a criticism. The, the whole thing. Yeah. But that part in particular, like talking about the Chinese military and what they're doing. No, that was the nationalists. The nationalists. Okay, that's not yeah. communists. Oh, okay. Okay. There's the, the communists were attacking them. Yeah. Okay. But still the nationalists yeah. were just as ineffective. Yes. Yeah. Because what I it's very, very hard. It was very hard to centralize any kind of power in China for a very long time. Right. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's just a, it's just a, it's, it's a criticism of the futility of all of it, mm, okay, of just yeah, the ridiculousness yeah. of yeah. the whole thing. But, um, they start, um, so they, so, 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 a lot, so this reformation took like how many years really in the end then? What do you mean reformation? Well, for, like the, like, so, so if when, did the, the, when the revolution start to yeah. when it ended, when, when, when it yeah, became more established the way it is now. Uh, it was pretty quick, if I remember correctly. Oh, was it? Okay. Um, let me let me let me look up the years. I don't know if I'm gonna get this wrong. Yeah, Chinese, because that's the part that was kind of confused me with the story, because I wasn't really aware of the. I had, that, I had to take aspect. I had to take like a bunch of history classes at the university on Asian history. For, yeah, for the degree I had. Um, it was forty five to fifty. Okay, so it was pretty like fast. Year, yeah. But I mean, it was pretty hard to say that the government was t- as uni- that unified before. So it was a lot of militia fighting and stuff. Yeah. So like so, Mao, Mao was actually a very central figure in 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 facilitating the whole thing and planning it. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's all I really enjoy the way it's it's almost because I really like how you said that it's, it's a universal in the fact that like you could find a story like this in any culture, but at any time in history, yes, it's, it's, it's a little, it, it's the most like Greek drama Mm -hmm. in its, in its presentation of the whole book. Yes. yes. Because there's this. And biblical. I find it's very, that whole part. It's very, well, it's very myth. It's like a myth. It is that whole part. Everything else was pretty. Yeah. 
was like a historical novel. Yes. But this part was like... Yeah, so I, I think it was very Greco, but I also just do think it was very Judaic. Uh, it, it, there are just so much elements of it in, um, in, in the descriptions of, of even just like what it means to be a good father, what it means to be a good man. Yeah. I think also was very derivative of Judaic and yeah. um, uh, Christian ideas, um, which mm-hmm. is just uh, which is very anti-communist. It's a reaction. It is, but, yes, um, yeah, yeah. Then this military scene. There's in this. Well, the it's like the military scene that it's a whole cup few chapters oh. yes, of the book yeah, where yeah. he's conscripted. But there's this scene where they're stuck in tunnels mm-hmm. because their commander. He, the commander spends all his time gambling and just not doing <laughs> yes, anything. Yeah, yeah. He's totally ineffective and not a leader, mm-hmm. which is part of the. The, the joke essentially mm-hmm. um, he makes friends with old Chuan which is Chuan which is a like an old man who he was conscripted and then for a decade ran away and was recast so he would run away from a platoon mm-hmm. and then the same thing would happen where they roll through town and pick him up again yeah so he was tired of running is essentially his thing he was like I just I'm not gonna run from the war any- I'm war anymore because it keeps picking me up and this is just a reality right, yeah. he was the most Confucian character of the yes, whole thing yeah. is very much just like re- resigned himself to whatever life was going to do to him. And he was, yeah. he was so not concerned. He knew everybody in the army. He was constantly talking. Right. It's like, Hey, you, where's this guy? And they're like, he's dead. And yeah. this whole thing, like, and he's yeah, just yeah. laughing about it. Like, fuck shit. He's, um, and then, um, Chang Shun, Chang Shun, Chang Shun mm-hmm. is the young, he was like a teenager. Yeah. And they're just like, there's Fu Gui, who is this like total fuck up and a teenager and this old man who make this little friendship Yeah, and they're sleeping among the ammunition and the rice sacks. Yes. Yeah. And they're, they run out of wood to cook the rice. So then the nationalist army starts dropping flatbread, um, which is really, it's just really, it's so, f- it's super funny that the, they had time to do all this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That just, it's so you Hawk can write the the darkest narratives ever. Are you? Mm-hmm. Do you have a time to leave? No, no, no. Just my email. I got oh, okay. Sorry, yeah. sorry, 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 sorry. Um, that he just is. He's. It's extremely dark and existential, mm-hmm. but he's just funny at the same time. Yeah. Like they start dropping flatbreads, and so they 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 all break. They all like break up and run out to get the flatbread. And mm-hmm. like if oh if we all split up, we can get some flatbread that drops out of the sky. Yeah, and yeah. they all get back and nobody got flatbread, but. Um, Chang Sheng had the idea to start stealing the sh- the rubber shoes off of the soldiers that were all dogpiling mm. to like get the flatbread. He's like, oh, if I just steal their shoes, we can burn these rubber shoes to cook rice. <laughs> so they're yeah, just yeah. like eating rice all the time, yeah. stealing these shoes. But the the scene I really liked is when the shit started really getting real and the, mm-hmm. the front got close enough to them and the village was totally d- like burned yeah, yeah. to cook rice. Yes, yeah. Mythological. Um, yeah. They, the 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 bodies of the wounded started getting piled outside of the mm-hmm. outside of that's when it wasn't funny anymore yes yeah like the they'd bring stretchers like stretchers upon str- like trains of stretchers of the of the injured and they would just dump them on the ground because mm-hmm. there were so many of them yeah and they just made these giant piles of screaming writhing bodies yes yeah. outside the tunnels and they're just like having to sit there and like live amongst the screams of the injured and dying yeah and there's the moment where at night it, snow falls and there's the one injured guy left alive and you can just hear his wailing off in the distance mm-hmm. and there's no gunfire anymore and then old Chuan, Chuan like walks out into the field and he just starts brushing the snow off the faces of the dead yeah, and yeah. turning them over and stuff and the bullets are whizzing past and what was his line his line was he was the guy he's the first one in the book who says um, just keep living Yes. No matter what, just keep living. living. And he said, once you try to remember what the exact line was later in the book is once, what is it? No matter how lucky a person is, once he decides that he wants to die, there's nothing that will keep him alive or something. Yeah. So he essentially is the first part in the book where he's like, no matter what, if you decide you want to live, you will no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. And there's this moment where it flips and he's obviously just like, he doesn't want to live anymore. He's, yes. he's just let go and he's just bullets are whizzing past him and he's just brushing the, mm-hmm. the snow off the faces of the dead Yes, and just looking at them and checking who they are. And then he's walking back and, um, mm-hmm. 
just kind of colloquially holds up his hand. And he's like, I knew four of them. And then he gets shot in the back and dies or he, he gets shot in the back, they carry him back in and then he dies. Oh, that was one of the parts that really, really bought, like really upset me <laughs> was he says like, where, what's the name of the, what's the name of this place? And they're like, we don't know. And then he just smiles and he's like, I don't even know the name of the place where I'll die. And then he dies. <laughs> it's just so it's so intense yeah 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 because there's stuff there's like it's like the character recognizes the comedy in that right yes like it's it's just abs- this stupid war they're fighting that was yeah. just resulted in terror for decades was just he like just he wasn't even allowed the opportunity to just know the name of the place he was going to die yeah and he just died in a tunnel somewhere that no one like but fuck yeah. yeah and it's just like there's a comedy in that but it's also like just crushing Yes, yeah, yeah. That's one of my. That's like that's one of the scenes of, of the book that yeah, really, I it gets yeah. you heavy. Yeah. Well, it just that just stuck with me. Yeah. Because it's just so nihilistic. It's so yeah, I know. Because that's the funny is like just life does that to you sometimes. It does, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. and I, I think that that's what's um, that's what's good about the story is that it is um. So, so like in when I was studying um, filmmaking, yeah, they said that in a narrative, uh, the the term that they use in this particular school of thought was um, consciousness, mm-hmm. and so um, very easy, like fun stories either that people like, you know, like mm-hmm. maybe like the Marvel movies. They only they, they normally only function within one conscious, and so there's um, only one level of enjoyment that you get out of it. Mm-hmm. And normally really good narratives, you start piling on for pi- by like three three to five different consciousness that kind of runs through the whole mm-hmm. st- story. And so like, you know, in, in some way, those, especially those war scenes, um, you know, was doing some of the classical ideas of war as mm-hmm. it just mm-hmm. being um, completely pointless and that there is no mm-hmm. real virtue in it. Mm-hmm. But, but it, I think it also was a... I don't want to say criticism, but by I guess expression of how life is even even outside of war. That many times you can live a life that is pointless. You can live you can live a life that is not worth living, mm-hmm. and, and and so that that kind of harkens back to even like his gambling days. You know that mm-hmm. really wasn't a life worth living. That was just mm-hmm. a life of pure um, mm-hmm. appetite of pleasures. And so, uh, what what's, what's I think was really good about the story was that there's it's there's so much layers in in, in its understanding and what you could get out of it mm-hmm. that that is not just a overt critique of communism or war. It re- or I mean, it really was only secondarily a critique. It was of communism. right, but it, it was it, the critique of communism. I think was 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 there for a broader criticism of how you live your life in general, mm-hmm. and um, and so. Yeah, and I, and I think that that's why those scenes were just that powerful. Is because mm-hmm. it, it is multi layered. Every and single scene is powerful. Yes, like every yeah. just there's that's. Have you seen the book in person? Mm-mm. It's this thick. Yeah, yes. Yeah, the the fact that the fact that and I'm not done talking about it, but like just that's mm-hmm. a comment I thought about earlier is like the fact that a a book can be so powerfully moving and be yeah. like that long. Yes, is yeah. kind of amazing. Yes, like um. A separate piece by John Knowles. Is it John Knowles? Is a is a book about you would you would you might also like that one. It's it's quite John. a bit more American. Yeah. Like especially like um post war American kind of thing. But yeah. it's essentially about boys at a school having to come to terms with the fact that their youth is about to be over because they're going to be drafted in World War Two. Mm. It's very, very it's it's yeah. extremely good. Is it yeah? It's just men not knowing how the hell to to be men well it's how to be men and the fact yeah. that like you're a, you're not a man you're a you're a man who's not a man yet yeah staring the fact that you have to become a man now in the face yes yeah. and like there's something there's something that's what that that's what to live is about too it's it like, is yeah. yes um well yeah and that goes i think to a um that's what here that's literally we were talking about rittenhouse thing like that's what that's yes, what a heroic yes, yes that's yeah, what yeah. a sacrificial narrative is yeah. about but but but, yeah. but but i think what what people could get out of this story too really is even a broader criticism of the way we we kind of exist now, especially for manhood. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I actually, I, I would say also for for femininity and, and womanhood. It's a beautiphily feminine. Like it this, is the yes. way it portrays femininity. It is, yeah, <laughs> beautiful. But um, I, I think one of the drive in. I was talking about this uh, to to Amanda one time because yeah. it, it seems like there's um. 
that there's something lost in our culture that is very hard for, i think for many of us to admit and i think mm-hmm. it's it's very hard you know for 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 young parents or um or whatever to re- to really even fathom of doing mm-hmm. and that is the willingness to put our kids through suffering mm-hmm. and we just we really don't we want to take care of our kids and um and the more uh, i guess corporeal pleasures that we could gain out of technology uh, out of you know us working and being sacrificial we want to give to our kids so they don't have to suffer in the same way that um uh that people in the past have and so we, we want to give them good things you want to give them a good education you want to give, you want to give them anything mm-hmm. and you want to sacrifice as much as you can for it and you want to fight for it you know you, you see man those those parents like in um in Virginia, that they were just fighting against the school board where things were teaching. These are all things, but the one thing that I, th- I still think is lacking is the transition t- toward adulthood for both the masculine and the feminine. It's like the masculine is required to get his ass kicked, and it and it's just some. There really is an aspect about that that is that that, that is what pushes one to become a man is you know like either going to war like you're talking about those young men um, go, yeah. going to world war ii or, or being drafted or whatever um or it's you know like having a bully in the school that kicks your ass or it is your father coming home and calling you a piece of shit because all you're doing is playing video games and then smacking you across the head and, and everything it, it, it is these these things that begin to trigger us to attempt to grow in, in the virtue of being a man oh, or yeah. being a, of, of being a woman, and um, and and I think that's what this story really displays really well, and, and I also do think it's something that we should always incorporate. You know, we, we should think about when we when when we just um or I think or analyzing our daily life or just analyzing our culture is like mm. you know what is what is what is going wrong like yeah. what would and, and to go back I know I said it humorously but even to go back to what we were talking about earlier about this like almost demonization of the ultra masculine you know athletic rational big big dick man yeah it is like now we look at that as a negative thing it, 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 you know we we want we want a young boys to never really become men and we want them to enjoy you know the pleasures that that a boy enjoys that he doesn't have to suffer through all of that that he doesn't have to you know kick ass that he doesn't have to do all these things mm-hmm. and that that there shouldn't be other people that do have that um to display it to make them feel bad about themselves yeah and that's why we try to shelter that we try to shelter the hyper masculine um big dicked man because we want to in some way protect our puny little um young boys uh to not feel bad about themselves Mm -hmm. rather i i think many times they need that Uh, they they, they, they just need that the way you talk so um fondly about your father Mm -hmm. the way that you know he'll call you idiot boy and 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 all that stuff was (laughs) it's actually good (laughs) it is it's actually good it's like yes we you know the the, the fathers just need to step up and be like, you have to, in some way, push your kid to grow in virtue. Because if you don't, they're going to remain children. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and and I think in this story, it really displays that really well. Well, it also yeah. displays the way in which it's painful for the parents to do of that much of the time. Yes, because yes. they just want to protect them. Yeah, it's it, it is extremely painful. Like the, 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 the frequency with which Fugue has to experience pain to do the right thing for his children is I know. constant. It's constant, yes. It's an extremely painful yes, story. Yeah. Um Do you want to talk about the scene where Yoching dies? Did that do anything for you? You you could talk about it. Did yeah. you not find it that moving at all? I didn't, but I was really busy during that scene. I, I do remember. Or let it, me but... let me just tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See yeah, if you yeah. feel anything. Cause, yeah. um, that's what one thing is. I I th- I really think we can talk about the film adaptation later because I've researched it. Mm. We'll talk about that yeah. in conclusion or something. But um, whether or not someone would get out of that the same thing, um, um, which I don't think they would. But um, mm. <coughs> um. There's so 
it's at the point where um, they're doing the point system. So it's the the communal point. I don't know what the words would be, but they have a point system where everybody in the family, if you're not going to school, you work, and then if a certain amount of work you do, it's a it's very much the what is it? What's the Marxist thing? The like each according to his need, so to each right, according yeah, to whatever yeah. that thing. I don't yeah, know what it yeah. is. I, I'm too. Yeah. This is it is interesting the way that you say this. It. This is relaxing. It is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm in a very sedate, Mm -hmm. nice, thoughtful mood. Yeah. I could get laughy, but we're not talking about something. It's just, but it's very, I'm very calm and peaceful. Yes. Yeah. Peaceful. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, but, um, what was I saying? It's they they have the point system. So like people, they're always, they, they have to go out in the fields and then depending on your age, your ability, your strength, whatever you earn a certain amount of points to yeah. uh, work points. And that, that corresponds with what you're given mm-hmm. in rations and stuff. So Yo Ching is going to school and Fukuoka has to go out and work with um, Feng Shai, I think is she's back at this point. Um, she's run back and been, reincorporated into the family and stuff. And Jia is bedridden at this point. I don't hmm. remember exactly, but, um, Yo Ching goes to school. And then while he's at school, he finds out that the County magistrate, uh, wink, wink has to, um, has a wife who I is in childbirth, who's losing blood. And so they have all the children, Yeah, which is extremely communist that you've had all the children go to the hospital and give blood for the County magistrate's wife. <laughs> You'd sacrifice the <laughs> yeah, children yeah. for the high, high ranking officials wife who's giving birth. But, um, there's no, no one in, in the school has the right blood type except for Fuquay's son. Yeah. Yo Ching. And he is extremely proud to be, I mean, he's, he's a young boy and he's like, you know, my, I get to, I get to give blood to the magistrate's wife to keep her alive. And, you know, but the doctors are really unconcerned with what's going on and he just keeps giving blood and giving blood and giving blood and giving blood. And he's saying that he's dizzy and they're like, no, no, that's just what happens when you, mm-hmm. when you give blood. And then he just like dies because mm-hmm. they take so much blood out of him, which is the, 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 the convincingly pathetic deaths yeah, that yeah. the author is capable of devising are like really impressive because mm-hmm. that would happen. Right. Yeah. Like that's, but it's like it's like comedically pathetic. It is yeah. that they just literally like suck the blood out of the kid and he dies. Yeah. But then Fukui hears that one of the kids runs up to the field and is like, "Is there, are any of you Yoching, Shu Yoching's father?" Mm-hmm. And and he Fukui just immediately is just like beside himself. He's like, "What happened now?" Yeah. And he goes to the hospital and literally they've left his son's body on a brick bed, mm-hmm. cold and like rigid. And he just like finds his son like in rigor mortis, cold mm-hmm. on this brick bed, and he just is like ready to kill somebody. Yeah. And he goes and attacks the doctors and stuff. And then it turns out the county magistrate is Chang Shung, the guy that he served in the Nationalist Army in the tunnels with. And I can't I can't imagine the the internal conflict that would cause. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um because that was really that's my that's another one of my favorite scenes is when Old Chuan dies in the tunnels, and then Fukui and um, Changsheng are hanging out, and he's like, "I really need to get some flat bread." And he just yeah. like runs off into the the gun smoke and just disappears forever. <laughs> so Fukui is like one war friend gets shot in the back, honoring the dead, and then the other one just disappears, and then he's alone. Yeah. And you know, um, but the fact that the county magistrate his wife was the one that Yo Ching Fukui's son sacrificed himself for. It's yeah. I just, it's, it's absurd, Mm -hmm. but somehow the author writes it convincingly. (laughs) It's it's so ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. No, that would, and then he finally made, he like in that moment makes peace with it. And he, he's like, you owe me, you owe me a life, dude. Yeah. As he walks away. <laughs> and then he literally has to carry the rigid body of his son all the way back to his burial plot. Yes. Yeah. It's so intense. <laughs> yeah. It just like, and I think father son stuff to me really hits me no matter what the dynamic is. Right, There's just yeah. something about it. Yes. Um, yeah. And he's like lying to his wife. Mm-hmm. And then his wife is like, carry me around town. Yeah. And then she's like, carry me towards the burial plot 
And then he's like, fuck. She's like, I know. <laughs> yes. And then she's like in her like sick and dying state, like yeah. grieving on the, like holding the grave as if, as if it's her son. And then he regrets burying her him without telling her because then she couldn't feel him one last time. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Yeah, that part was intense. <laughs> yeah, that was good. I'm trying to think if there's anything, any other scenes. Just like... You know, I will, I will admit I was really kind of worried because I know that you're not especially, I think especially if you've, if you read it, it yeah. would not have hit you the same way because the yeah. you, just the way that reading, right? Yeah. there's, it's, it's few books really hit me the way it does, but I think the language is so simple and direct that I'm able to enjoy it. Yes. Reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think as I can't, I can't get into, especially like 19th century, like English stuff. Oh, yeah, it's just so flowery. I it just is, can't, yeah, it doesn't yeah. do anything. Maybe if I should Maybe try it. I should yeah. try it in an audiobook and just see if Yeah, if it does something. It's like literally that. the act of reading is so laborious that yeah. getting through a flowery sentence is I just doesn't mean anything to me. This yeah. is so frank in the way that it's written. Yes, well, which did. which I appreciated more. Yes, yeah. I liked it. But I'm um, able to visualize it more if you have less words. But when you were saying like, no, it's a great story, I was like, Oh my god, thank God. Like I, I was just like I was worried yeah. that you were gonna read it and be like, eh. And I was oh, gonna really? be upset yeah. and not gonna want to talk about it. <laughs> yes, yeah, um, yeah. What did you think of the scene where his grandson choked on the beans? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was a good one. <laughs> yeah, it almost it almost every, with each consecutive yeah. tragedy. Yeah, Fuqua, or pathos really, but yeah, yeah, each, each each consecutive death, pathetic death. Yeah, he just was more and more at peace with the fact that people die. Yes, yeah. Um, I, it's. I I I I think I think there's something about I don't I can't think of a contemporary he's still writing now. Yeah. I think how old, let me look how old he is. He's not that old. Oh, really? Um he did I've read several. He has some some very interesting his uh, you listen to that afterward thing like he yeah. I actually have some of his col- collections of sto- short stories. Mm-hmm. He was yes. pretty experimental. Was he? Yeah. There's a really interesting thing that he wrote about a guy, he lives in an apartment and he keeps going out and seeing this girl that mm-hmm. he's like obsessed with, like crossing the street and stuff. Yeah. And she's like dressed a certain way. And then you, he like notices her mm-hmm. in a spot that you wouldn't notice a person. You're like, okay, something's up. Yeah. And then he yeah. notices her in a weird spot and you're like, oh, this guy's schizophrenic. And mm-hmm. then it just like, just like, yeah, ex- yeah. like totally devolves into this crazy yes. schizophrenic thing. Yeah. It's just like, what I'm really happy he has such good translators. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he knows them. Oh, really? Because th- yeah. he's so. How old is he? Yeah, he's only sixty one. Like he's he's oh, still he's, he's yeah, yeah he's, he's, still he's yeah. Wow. So ninety. He was born in nineteen. How old would a person be? So he's he was born in nineteen sixty. So this he literally he wrote this when he wrote this book when he was thirty three. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of incredible. Yeah. Like he, he he was that developed as a writer to write something this spectacular yes, yeah, in narrative think. power. Yes, yeah. Um, there's something about that era of ch- in China after Mao died that really, really. Yeah. You should. I, I wonder if they have. Do they have an audio copy? They have an audio book of um, China in ten words. We should cover that sometime. Let me find that. Would that's more historical? Um, in, oh my God, they do. No, they don't. Never mind. Fuck. I have the card. Call. I've read it. China. In how many words? China in 10 words. Ten it's words. essentially a, a word per essay. It's 10. It's 10 chapter essays in a, mm. like an autobiography slash mm. memoir slash historical. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, it's really worth reading. Um, but no, I really, I really, I can't tell you the sigh of relief. I, exhaled when you told me you liked it and that it, meant, <laughs> that it was good and i was yes, like yeah, okay yeah, yeah. at least i have taste <laughs> i'm trying to think if there's any other scenes but like the fact yes. that the it's it's it's, it's funny it's, it's each death was more absurd right yes and i think that was intentional though yeah yeah i, I think it, it, it i mean he's he is adhering to some absurdist f- philosophy i think obviously like Camus or something mm-hmm. like right yeah but he does it much, much better. He does. Yeah. Um, there's a, cause so what is the thing about? It's like, what would one, it's the fact that no matter what you do mm-hmm. and no matter what life you live, you will suffer. And 
your only sane option is to deal with it. Yes. Yeah. Because then you're not really suffering. Mm -hmm. And at the end, like the, 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 the old man secondary narrator. Yeah. Has just made peace with it. Yes. Yeah. And that's the thing I think it connects with me most. Cause I mean, I've, I've lived a life where I've suffered a lot. You've lived mm-hmm. a life where you suffer a lot. Like we, yeah, yeah. I think all of us have, especially in the room have suffered more than the average person. Yeah, 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 I don't yeah. necessarily want to get into it, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like we, we, we know suffering well. Yes. Yeah. Um, and the internal processes were necessary in dealing with it mm-hmm. and coming, like making peace with it. Yes. And I think that's why it connects with me so much. Right, yeah, because it does, yeah, and and I th- and I think the reason why it's also better is because he he is adhering to some, I guess, theological principles and is more Eastern theo- theology like Bo- Buddhist principles, mm-hmm. where suffering really is the um, the desire that one has to ha- to not want the situation to be what it is, you know. It, is that Eastern? Yeah. Because you say that all the time, you actually do, yes. okay, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, it's actually the, it's actually a. I mean, it, it is also very um, Christian as well. But I think the terminology that I'm using comes from more from the East, is more of Buddhist. Tilt your mic down just a tiny bit. Oh, yeah. So, so it's 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 yeah. it's the idea that in order, yeah. in order to alleviate the suffering, one must desire the state of being that is rather than. Or rather it's than, it's it's not necessarily desire it, but like mm-hmm. recognize the beauty in it. Yes, yeah. Which but, is, I mean, I guess to desire. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. once you do yeah. recognize the beauty, yeah. And so, um, but but us desiring mm-hmm. um, that which is not is yeah. always going to lead to suffering. Yeah. And, and I think in the end, that's what he's, mm-hmm. that's essentially what he's saying. So mm-hmm. so it is adhering to some kind of absurdist principles, yeah. but it is Easternizing it yeah. to the point that is actually much more profound than anything Camus or oh, Sartre yes, yes. would it's, ever say. This because, is, if you like existential literature, yes, yeah. to live by Yu Hua is like, it's what existentialism it's, it should, should, have should have been. been. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that there, there could have been very profound ideas that came from existential yeah. movement that didn't because they, they just rested in the absurd. While he's not resting in the he's absurd. He's making sense of the absurd. He's making sense of the absurd, right, yeah. yeah. And that's um, um, and that's what and I think that's what an existentialist should, should do. Yeah. Because that's, I mean, that's literally, I, sh- I should read, I should read just that, so... Chapter thirteen, where Wan, is that where Wan Shi dies? Where you said that was super short. Yes, yeah, it's ridiculous. And then the last chapter is literally mm-hmm. three minutes. Yes, they're beautiful. They're just they are, little. Yeah. The last chapter of the book is one of one of like the most beautiful. The people say that he looks like his his um. What was it? An ox? His ox, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They look the same. They, they were, the same. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's just like. It was nice. Yeah. It's heartbreakingly gorgeous. Yeah. Like, there's biblical narrative. There is, and then yes, there's yes. the last chapter of To Live. Yes, you. yeah. <laughs> um, when we're done, I'm going to read the last little paragraph of it. Okay, um, yeah. I found it. Okay. Because I really didn't have my um, hard copy. But, like, there's. I think that you and I are both deeply moved in the same way at narratives that make sense of tragedy. Mm -hmm. Like, right. Yeah. Like one of the things in my life, the, the, the convert, the, or genus of conversation in which I engage the most passionately Mm -hmm. is extolling beauty. Right. Yeah. Like when someone, when someone comes to me and which, happens as frequently to you as it does to me which is mm-hmm. the weird trait that we share yeah that people constantly come to me and they're like i want to kill myself or like life doesn't mean anything or like i just there's something mm-hmm. about i don't know if it's for the same reason or what but like we i have i have i literally on the phone have talked like eight people off of suicide like yes yeah, yeah. it's very and i'm like i this the conversation you're like what's your favorite food just tell me your favorite food and they're like what yeah. and i'm like just just Tell me your favorite food. Yeah. Like if you could eat something right now, what is it? And then they tell you and you're like, okay, banana pancakes. Interesting. Imagine eating that right now. And they're like, well, and you're like, okay, if you kill yourself, you can't do that again. Yeah. There's, there is so much, there is so much experience of beauty. Mm-hmm. You will not have mm-hmm. if you're gone right now. Yes. Yeah. Like life is worth living just because of the little, like mm-hmm. I actually, 
the the episode that we've recorded that I like the most is the peanut butter unto death one. Okay, yeah. I think that one to me is the most moving. Yeah. That's the one where we literally were moved to, like you and I were like kind of emotional, like yeah. recording it. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's worth living because we get to eat the peanut butter one more time. Like this, like yes. that's what the whole book is about. Yes. Just is. keep living. Like yeah. just, it like the suffering will be outweighed by, and that's again, the way that it's written the moments of beauty in the book mm-hmm. were purely beautiful. Yes. Yeah. That's it. There wasn't, there wasn't any sinister overtones. There mm-hmm. wasn't any disqualification of it. There wasn't yeah. any irony. There mm-hmm. wasn't, that, I feel like a lot of the existential writers did some of that. Right. Yeah. Especially like Sartre and Camus and stuff. Like yes, the, yeah, the, yeah. the later existentialist writers did a little bit of like a, yeah, like the stranger. Um, I remember in the end of the book, I was like, "Why the fuck did I read that?" Well, it's like this is the weird, like it, it yeah. especially Sartre. I haven't. I, is it Myth of Sisyphus is Camus, mm-hmm. or I'm trying to remember whatever I buy Sartre. There's a weird. Maybe? There's a weird mocking of people that enjoy things in it. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's what it. That's obviously not what it means to exist. So I yes, don't think yeah, it's yeah. very effective existential writing. <laughs> it's almost like the Chinese got existential writing. No, I really do think right? that they, yeah. 50 years after the existentialists yes, were all yeah. dead. Um, but that's what I love about to live so much is that this old man working the field with his ox that he bought for his dead grandson as a climax to all of the other death in his yes, life. Yeah. And he just was like, this I'm alive and this is, this is what living is and yes, there's yeah. beauty here. Yep. And yeah. do you, do you have anything else to say about it before I read the last little no, bit no, or, no, okay. So just, just, um, so what happens is the last chapter, just to explain it to people, I have to go, God, I Googled away from my original tab, <laughs> which is always a mistake. Um, I can find it really quick. Um, could you tell me the sentence I was starting? About the... Oh, the last, last chapter. chapter. So yeah. it's essentially... So the guy, it's a man who allows an old... So it's also a little... It's a little bit of an, an argument as to why you should sometimes let old people just tell you everything about their life. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes right, yeah. I've had, I've had multiple, especially like when I told, when I told you about the lady at work who just <laughs> divulged to yeah. me the way in which every member of her family died. Yeah. And I just sat there for like 20 minutes and I was like, this is really funny, but also <laughs> extremely important that I'm letting this happen right now. Cause yeah. I can tell no one's allowed her to do this. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, which is a really weird thing to have happen at work. But I, mm. I remember I was both moved and like dying of laughter on the inside, <laughs> which is kind of the proper reaction. Yeah. Um, but he, the old man tells him his story and then the, did, and, and how Yuhua ends the book is just a description of the landscape. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which is interesting yeah, yeah. because I think it, it's a little nod to the fact that beauty exists beyond the self mm-hmm. a little bit that like it's mm. it pre-exists people yes, yeah, yeah. which i think that asian thinking really gets right yes yeah um i would need to i would say western thinking used to get it right but yes it's, it's i think well i think so i think that now, well right? that's the thing i think the reason that asian east asian um media and art and literature resonates with people now. Like the reason I think that people like anime now better than they like American TV is they still have a sense of the fact that the beautiful is like an objective thing. Like a good anime understands that way better than anything the U S is making now. I mean, so, so much animes can really bring you to tears. I remember this one, even there was a cowboy bebop one, one. which I am (laughs) such a cowboy bebop. Oh, are you? I I, I have seen it. Blind girl. Yeah. It was like that off episode and it really was just following the narrative of the entire series. But Mm -hmm. that episode which is so just tell me the plot just just for I, the sake of the show no i think you would have to because i haven't seen it for for, for a long time so you probably much but I, I remember when i watched it it was just so um, so can i so i'm, I'm mm-hmm. sorry if i'm gonna ruin the entire climax of the show yeah for yeah. the listener yeah if I you okay people, but anyways, yeah. i'm so happy to hear that <laughs> 
it has it has the best anime soundtrack ever. Oh, it was amazing. Yoko yeah. Kano is a genius. Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend a few animes to you to okay. watch that were scored by her. Okay, yeah, because she's Yoko Kano is my, my yeah. favorite anime. Because my time. two like animated series uh, that, that I love the most was Cowboy Bebop and um, Trigun. <sighs> Those two, literally, the riff starts playing. In my head. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the late, Trigun, the, no, the late nineties, so the late nineties and early two thousands. Have yeah. you watched Full Metal Alchemist? Uh, not all the way through, but I did watch quite a few of those. Yeah, yeah. We're on Toonami or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you should which, watch which that. Good, you should yeah. watch that because yeah. it's it's an atheist coming to the terms with the fact that life is right. more than what he yes. thinks it is. Yeah. Is really what Full Metal Alchemist yes. is about. And anybody who has problems with that, who watches anime, DM me. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> That's what the show is about. Yeah. An atheist coming to terms with the fact that life is more than what he thinks it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that the human body is more than the, the the chemical compounds that compose it. But um, just oh, my face tingles when I think of the conclusion of Cowboy Bebop. It, mm-hmm. it it's just it more and more dream. All of his friends leave him. Yes. Yeah. Ed leaves. Faye Valentine mm-hmm. leaves. He leaves Jet. And then what's the? Is it? Vicious is the is the main pr- antagonist right, name right, yeah, yeah. with the gray hair. Yeah, he just goes and confronts him, and he kills him. Yeah, and then he li- he goes bang, and then dies on the fucking stairs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's so incredibly good. Yeah, that just this there's this. Have you watched Death Note all the way through? You if you haven't, no, no, you have to watch that. Okay, like yeah. watch it soon. Yeah, okay. that's my favorite anime of all time. Death it's Note, it's okay. biblical is in it? its symbolism. Is that a recent one? Uh, two thousand five. We, we, we tell me the premise. I think somebody else really recommended this. You one to you me. you have to watch it. We yeah. should we should do a fucking Death Note episode. That would okay, be yeah. Amazing. Well, can, can, can we, is, is that the so, one where no. they write the yes? yes. And the, okay, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Somebody told me that I would really like you, that one. You, no, I'm I'm telling you, you'd really like. Yes, it. yeah, yeah. Okay. I know your taste. Yes, yeah. Um, the, it's. There's, there's foot washing in mm-hmm. like, it's like, it's, mm-hmm. there's something about, so, so I, my theory, oh my God, there's another movie. It used to be on Netflix is called um, Aftershock. Okay. And it's a multi-generational story about there was a, in the same city, there was an earthquake in like, I'm going to get the years wrong. It was like 76, 96, 2006 or something. Yeah. And it's just a family having to deal with the chaos of earthquakes yeah. and there's something that east asian media understands about the nature of beauty that americans just yeah, don't yeah. get anymore that's why i could i could name you easily a dozen anime or chinese movies or korean yeah. movies that moved me to tears that no western media has done in the last 30. right yeah 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 i would agree with that i i, I just feel like they have i don't know the Western culture, at least for like for, for for hundreds of years, have already been deteriorated in that. But I really do. Think, East Asia has a sense of beauty Asia that's external yeah. to the yeah. person, and that I they do just think that's get. why when people do find interest in it, uh, it's it they they're very strongly associated with their love of like Eastern art. Yeah, people like, like weeaboos. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but, but I do think it's because they are recognizing something. They're recognizing something that um that is lacking in Western media. That um yeah. That they still have. That's that's funny that you kind of agree with me that like anime will give you a sense of beauty that Western media has. No, been yeah, able of to course, in a very yeah. Long time. Oh yeah. Um, I haven't watched a lot of more recent animes. I probably should. I just, uh, you know. there's there's a drop off after like 2016, 2017. Oh, is there? Yeah. Everybody who watches anime would understand. Oh, okay. There's yeah. a weird. It just doesn't do it yeah. anymore. But I there's maybe they've there, been too Westernized now. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what yeah. it is. Um, it's it's weird and off putting. Um, yeah. Their their comedy is funnier. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just because I because people people go like oh you you just you know the like yellow fever but for art kind of argument mm-hmm. where they're like oh you just like Asian stuff because you're a weirdo. It's like no, there's there's something happening in East Asia that yeah. used to happen here. Yeah, that doesn't happen anymore. Right, and yeah. that's why so many Americans gravitate towards it because there's a sense of aesthetics oh, yeah. that yeah. I mean, but but just the deep meaning. I mean, like mm-hmm. when when you watch Trigun, it's like there's no way that you could watch that show and not understand that the, the uh, guy. The, what's the secondary character with the literal gun that is a cross? Right? And carries yes, on his back? I know. Yeah, yeah. Like 
He literally carries a gun wrapped yes. up like a cross. Yeah. <laughs> like, and that, 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 that the entire time he was there to, um, uh, you know, a- a- Ash is his name, right? Ash the Stampede or something. But anyways, that, that Vash, 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 that's Vash. what it was. Yeah. The, the, oh, the riff is so I know. good. <laughs> he was there to like uh, try to save his brother. Yeah. And it's just so beautiful. It yeah. was like, you know, his brother who just went to completely the opposite way. Yeah. Went, you know, just one of the best villains, I think, yeah. of, of any like um, artistic work. Yeah. Um, I like, I identify with the brother so much and I, yeah. I, I like, I, I love it. I, I just, I just love everything about it. But yeah, that, that in the end, he just, he had to, you know, be there to show him, um, what it means to actually truly live, to love, to, you know, yeah. to be sacrificial and everything. And, um, well, that's the thing that Japanese media always, always, always done very well. Sacrifice. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's which like, is funny because I mean, that was a, a central Christian idea I know before Protestantism. It was like, everything was about that sacrifice. And then and so, residually, but especially for the last like hundred yes. years, especially. Yes. It just doesn't the East yeah. 50 years like doesn't exist. Anymore. No, it doesn't. It's gratification but in itself. The, in the yeah. East, it does very heavily. Mm. And, um, Mm. Oh no! Like have you I, watched um, Departures? No, I never or heard of that Beetle. one. Is that good? One? So, have you have you watched any of the Ghibli movies? Studio Ghibli. It uh, would shock Spirited me. Away. <sighs> yeah. Do you like that? Or do you find not, it not as much as like Why? Trigun or Cowboy Bebop? Yeah. Um. What do you What do you not like about it? I I guess I didn't find the characters as interesting. Oh. Yeah. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. Is it? Yeah. Um, I would have um, to watch it again. It's you would like you would like um, Porco Rosso. Is the English is Kurenai no Buta is okay, the yeah, Japanese yeah. title. Yeah. It's about a, a a seaplane pilot cursed to look like a pig who has to get over himself and help women. It's very mm. it's yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's very you would yeah. like that one more. Yeah. Um, but um, the same um, composer who does the music did all the music for Okudi Beetle Departures. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's about a man who, oh, you would, it's, it's about death. So it's yeah. called Departures because the guy, um, he is a cellist in an orchestra. The orchestra, the orchestra goes belly up. So he has to, he has, he can't make money anymore. So he and his wife, uh, Hirosue Ryoko, who is the, is the actress from Wasabi, which we found out we both love apparently. Yeah. Um, that actress mm-hmm. is the wife in this movie. She's one of my favorite oh, okay. Japanese actresses, but she's the yeah. wife and he finds, he just has to find work Yeah, as a man would, if he's in hard times, you know, just support his wife. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he finds work in quote unquote departures. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's like, okay, so are they like booking traveling or something? You know, like yeah. what's, what is that? Cause it's, it's very euphemized and he doesn't get it. So he shows up and he's like there for an interview and he's like, why are there coffins all over the office? And it turns out that they're, um, it's a, it's a, it's a business that prepares bodies for tra- uh, traditional Japanese burial. Mm-hmm. And there's a huge stigma, especially in your rural Japan of people who prepare bodies. So it's mm. him having to come to terms with death and life and having to prepare bodies and what it means to die yeah. and so it's so good it? yeah, yeah and there's just there's there's movies like this that just don't exist in western media anymore no yeah like mel yeah. gibson makes movies that like um sorry, yeah. saint mel gibson makes yeah. movies that kind of like rival it and it's like understanding of life it does. and death yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. And, like, and like meaning and stuff mm-hmm. but like like the full metal alchemist one that every, everybody who watches anime has watched it yeah, it's yeah. one of like the it has like extremely good soundtrack. Yes, especially yeah. for the opening and the ending and stuff. And like, but um, it's these two boys. So it's an alternate reality in Germany mm-hmm. where alchemy actually worked. Yes, yeah. So yeah. everybody's like, like alchemy is a thing you can practice, like science. Yes, it's very. Yeah. It's 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 a weird premise, but um, these two boys who their mother dies, their father left them and their mother dies. And then they just take it upon themselves to like learn how to make their mother again out of alchemy. But it's the, mm-hmm. it's the one the like the law of alchemy that like human, they call it transmutation. Cause you know, that yeah. was the word for it. Human transmutation is forbidden. Yeah. But then they attempt it and Alphonse, the brother loses his body and his, his soul is linked to a body of armor mm. and then Edward loses an arm and a leg. And now right, it's, yeah. it's literally just Edward being an atheist mm-hmm. having to come to terms with the fact that 
the, that reality is more than what he thinks it is trying to somehow get him his his brother's body back yeah it's it's really good yeah 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 but there's a lot of like um green, no, the, what I like saw homunculi it, it's it's you yeah, would, you would like it you would it, really, really liked like, it i just i never got had got like the dvd like with, yeah. with Cowboy Bebop and Trigon, I got the DVDs and then I kind of watched it all the way through. That one, uh, Full Metal Alchemist. I Cowboy got two- Bebop is so spectacular. Yeah, I know. Yes, yeah. <laughs> what else did you do? Did you, like, did you watch like Sham- Samurai Shampoo and stuff like that? I never seen. He's that done movie. a lot. He's done a lot of other series. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. That's um. Is it Shinichiro Watanabe? He's okay. known as kind of an auteur. Yeah. Um, in anime, so like, if he does a project, he does everything. Oh, okay, yeah. So it's a very it's a very unified artistic vision, which yeah. I really like. Yes, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of other other things to talk about, <laughs> about <laughs> like other Eastern media that I really really enjoy. Um, yeah, there was always more that I wanted to. It just that I, I'm I, I'm not that knowledgeable. So I normally normally when people tell me you should watch this, I think you'll like it. That's how I got into it. I'm just like, can I just start recommending sad yeah. anime to, yes. to yeah, yeah. The listeners? Well, first, I really do want yeah. to try out that, um, death note just because this it's, is the second time. I, so I've can I tell it. you the plot? Yes. Yeah. Has someone really articulated the plot yeah, to you? Yeah. yeah but you probably do it better. Yeah. So what happens mm-hmm. is there is a, it's it's extremely Japanese, and that Shinigami, yeah. Shinigami are the literally Shinigami gods of death mm-hmm. that um, exist on a separate plane of existence than the rest of everything does. Yeah, and each of them decide when people die, and they yeah, all yeah. they all have their own death notes. And the interesting thing is, throughout the show and the manga and stuff, all of the death notes it's literally death note is yes. written on there, but they're all in different languages. So you'll see them in all different languages yeah, throughout yeah. the show. Like each Shinigami has like a different, there's like, I don't remember if there's one in the Arabic, there's one in Chinese, yeah. etc. cetera. Um, but there's portals to the human world mm-hmm. and they're all that, all the Shinigami do all day is just like gamble and like do nothing. Yeah. Cause they just decide who dies and that's a totally yeah. meaningless existence. And, uh, one of them decides to just throw his death note into the human world and see what happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he just is, yes, it's Ryuk yeah. just, poof, it's like that. Let's see what a human does with this thing. Yeah. And then it lands um, in the schoolyard in front of the star student of a high school. Mm-hmm. And he decides that in the death note, it's yeah. now because he decides who lives and dies. He decides to start, just writing the name of any criminal he yeah. he sees on TV or in the news or whatever, and it just devolves into him becoming the god of death. Yeah, and as a human, not no not being able to handle that, and just devolving into insanity. Mm-hmm. And it's it's so like the 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 it's a but it also does the um kind of like. Japanese city at night investigative narrative mm, really yeah, well. Yeah. So there's lots of twists you wouldn't expect. It's very, yeah. it's extremely well written, Yeah, yeah. but just symbolically one of my favorite. Yeah. And it's, I, it's my favorite anime of all time. Really? Okay. Yeah. Number I, one. I, yeah. It's, it's, I have to watch it then. Yeah. It's, it's 26 episodes. It's really, sh- it's, it's one season. Yeah, that's what I love about them though. <laughs> they're, they're really short. Yes. It's like, I, I like to see like they're, they're, they're longer than a movie, but they're shorter than like you um, can finish Western month, shows. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. like, I, I yeah. like that. It, yeah. It's, it's, uh, I find I it love mini series. Me too. Yeah. It's mini series. It's like a really good, really, like, like this. You know, most cultures do that. Yeah. When I was growing up, like every miniseries, that my, every like soap opera that my mom watched were all miniseries. You go to a Univision and Telemundo, they're always like one or two seasons, and yeah. then you just get into a new one. And I, was, I, I like that um, scenario a lot better than having these eight Giant, long years. Long, yeah, it's like, why? Like, it's 30 just, year long soap opera. It's stupid. It, like, even shows, like, man, Office should have been like five seasons. Our, That's it. Um, this is literally the exact opposite position that our previous guest holds oh really okay, yes so, <laughs> i hope he doesn't get pissed off and call us stupid on the timeline or something but this wait, wait, wait. who was our previous guest oh 
Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm just saying. This I don't I don't know who's listening, but this okay, is yeah, yeah. You said we had to define who our enemies were. That's fine. Um yeah. But um no, I agree. I really like I love mini documentary series. I, know. I love well, Yeah, they're great. That's um, like I'm glad the 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 US is finally doing it with mm-hmm. because of Netflix and stuff. They're having like these really cohesive mini series mm-hmm. and you could just like watch them and they're fantastic because it's like things run its course and yeah. and we know this it, like every everybody that I've talked to that likes um sitcoms they always every single one says maybe after season six four, or seven. five or six yeah it's normally within those, well they within hit their five. stride in two or three yes and yeah. then they die out in five or six yes and then the, 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 it just should have ended yeah. and that's what everybody says and and a lot of times like I stop watching after that like I stopped watching um that zombie one after four walking dead. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't ever watch it. Yeah. It was a really good show. Like I have nothing against it, but it was I like, know lost got really bad. Yes. After the first but, but game of like, Thrones just, got really it's bad. Just, it's just end. Like, yeah. just clo- close it up. Like I'm done. Like it, it's Michael, the problem with like sequel movies. It is. Yes. It's in it, it. It lasts for way too long, but mini series it's like it ends right when it needs to end and you're satisfied you're like i'm so glad well, that's the thing is like it's the great, best yeah. the best art is is made within parameters yes yeah and you need you that. have a okay you have a you can make six episodes and if you're yeah. a competent director you'll make yes. a beautiful thing out of six episodes. yes yeah and that's true about virtually everything mm-hmm um, it, it was the same thing like in grad school for, for writing. Mm-hmm. My master's thesis, they gave you a longer parameter. Mm-hmm. When when I got my MPhil thesis, it was a shorter one. So I so your first one is that it has to be between like um, uh, 25 to 30,000 words, right? And then and then the, the, the more heavy research paper was like, has to be done in 15,000 words. Yeah. It's like, okay, the challenge. And, yeah. and, and, and it's like, you can't go past it. You get past it. They, they fail you automatically. Yeah. And, and I was like that, that, that is a much, it, cause you should be able to, to say what you need to say, say in a shorter span it, mm. it, for it to be yeah. cohesive mm. and use the proper jargon and everything. I think and that's for, why. So this actually yeah. speaks to what I said earlier about to live. It's, it's this long. Yes, exactly. You don't need List, all that. just listening to the audiobook. I yes. was like in tears eight times. Yes, and that's the masterpiece of it is because there he's able to to say what he needs to say in a not in this verbose, you know, huge way. Yeah, huge way. Which there is time for ver- verbosity. Like there's yes, there's yeah. appropriate but, times. But for the that. entire book shouldn't be that. No. Yeah, and, and I think well, what he does really well is that he tells a story. He that's, covered that's forty moving. years yes. in two hundred pages. Yes, I know. Yeah. Um, it's, it's fantastic. I'm, yeah. I just, I'm, I'm so glad you liked it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> really, really. I was, and cause like yeah. when we've talked about fiction and stuff, it just doesn't. And once mm-hmm. we, once we have this audiobook thing we're doing, yeah. Um, which really makes, it's the only way that we can practically cover anything like this. Yes. While yeah. still having day jobs. Yes. And yeah. be able to do it on a weekly basis. Yeah, yeah. I understand that people were like, Oh, you should actually read sexual persona and then you'll get something out of it. That's a, th- th- like what, 700 page thesis? Yeah, yeah. Okay, talk to you in four months. Like, what do you, yeah, like, yeah. I, can't, I don't have time to Even read. if we did, we're not going to get more out no, of it. No, no, I understand. Yeah. We said that. That's yes, what we yeah. said. But it's just like, it, it, so it was, it's an eight hour audiobook. Yeah. Just listen to it. Read it. Just something, there's something, it's. Right, yes. It's the most beautiful thing anyone will read. Yes. Yeah, written yeah. in the last. 30 40 years like it's 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 so spectacular yeah um the only the really the only things to me that rival it in its in its scope are like essentially religious texts right yeah <laughs> like you could use it as a religion you could base yes. you could make a to live ism kind of yeah yeah you thing. probably could actually it yes. really like wouldn't be that wrong yeah um yeah and I really do think that's something that some people misinterpret when I say that I, I don't read novels. They yeah. think that, therefore, I, I don't like narratives. Mm-hmm. That's not what I'm saying. No. Like, I'm literally saying so that I reading don't is like laborious. to read it. And yes. if, you're, if your narrative yeah. is too long, I'm not going to get anything out of it. Yes. is that it, yeah. Reading it is not something that I want to Like, read. I don't know if I've told you this before. So, the mo- the last... 
I read, so when did I read this first? Mm-hmm. Would have been, so Alec moved in with me October of 2018. I would have read that this that winter. So f- three years ago, mm. four years ago yeah. in there, I'd had a copy of it. Um, it totally consumed me. Yeah. And as literally I, I used to go to this, um, the city laundromat over here on gamble. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause I live right there. Yeah. Um, I would still be there if the landlord wasn't insane. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's a super cheap apartment for how awesome it is. They yeah. wouldn't let me have a dog. Um, <laughs> but while I was moving out, I smuggled Truman in there all the time as a puppy. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> he was there for like a month. <laughs> I'd put him in a backpack. It was awesome. Mm-hmm. But, um, um, at like the last, the concluding part of it after Coogan dies, mm-hmm. choking on the beans and like the, just that whole, that little last part, I, I literally, I was waiting for my laundry to dry at a laundromat yeah. and I had to hide behind washing machines. I was literally like in tears. Yeah. Yeah. Reading it, <laughs> which I think that I really think that there is in fiction an engagement you get with the text from reading. If mm-hmm. you, if you have the attention span and the time, right, I think yeah, it's yeah. a little bit better. Yeah. Um, especially because you, you, you really can't be doing anything else. So it kind of forces, if you were just listening with your eyes closed, yeah. it's the same thing. Yes. And, but and that, reading facility yeah. like necessitates that. Yeah. Um, I really think that listening to an audio book, if you're really just going to sit there and listen to it mm-hmm. is the same exact thing as reading. Yes. I mean, yeah. it's not the same thing as reading, but no, it's, it you, isn't. You yeah. I mean, obviously the act is different, but the information that you get in audio book l- yeah. l- allows you distraction a little bit better Yes, because you yeah. can listen to it and do something else, yes, which yeah. you don't get. You just said, you said that. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. but, but for me reading is so laborious. It's so hard that I cannot, my get eyes are so bad and emotions. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I, I really cannot get emotions out of it when I'm reading because I'm concentrating on the words that I'm reading. Yes. And, um, and so for me, it's more distracting to read than it is like developing film and listening. Yeah. Because like the act of reading is just, it's, it's too much. Yeah. I, I think I've said it on the podcast, but yeah, it's, it's something that, that I think um, later in life, like I never knew this was something because I never said anything to my teachers, mostly because I didn't want my mom to kick my ass. And so my mom would just be like, if I can't read then I'm stupid, so fine, I'll, I'll just read. And so I forced myself to read it, but um, I never... I never knew that this is actually um, a it, it's 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 one of the um, what is that I guess clues or qualities that they have when they diagnose someone as um uh, dyslexic. Oh, I I actually yeah I borderline had been diagnosed. Have you? Yeah, like I never told anybody, so nobody could ever like I I used to cheat. So what I did was like when I was in school and the teachers made you read out loud. Um, teachers always go in patterns. Mm-hmm. And so like I, I saw where the student is and they're going around. So I, so I counted. So you read it over and over, yeah, and, over, over and over and over and over, and over, over, and over again. Over, right. Over, so yeah. then when I read out loud, I, I um, could do it. Mine. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's a vision thing. I actually, so, yeah. you know, I'm a preemie baby. Yes. Yeah. 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 I actually have underdeveloped corneas on both. Yeah. So my, like if I take these, so this is a, what pe- anyone who knows anything about glasses, this is a, I think I wear a 1.25 prescription and then my, my bifocal, I wear bifocals as a mid 20 year old, (laughs) um, which helped me read things. But, um, it's extremely low prescription, but if I take them off, I now see four eyes on you and really, um, that, that passageway into the front area is probably where my vision would start being clear. Oh, okay. So I see. when I read books, my eyes literally strain really bad. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. And yeah. the words become like blurred. Yeah. So really, we're just dyslexic. Is what yes, we're saying. yes, yeah. yeah we like, can't, like, we like, have to have other people read books yeah. to us. Yes. <laughs> because we can't read. No, like the, there's this, um, um, like those experiments that they've done. And, and when I was in college, is when I started to know, because, um, there was other people there that were dyslexic. And so they would, they would give, they'd give me like the test that they gave them. Yeah. And, um, and so one of them was most people, if you put two articles together, don't really notice it because when a normal person reads, they have what they're called sight words. 
And so people um, skip sight words for the most part. So if, if they give them a test and they, they were like, you know, um, the man walked to the, the store, um, a, a normal reader would not notice the, the, the double thes there. They just read it as the man walked to the store. Mm-hmm. While when I read, I have to read every single word. So I, I like sight words don't work for me. Mm-hmm. And so when I read it, I always catch it. It's like the man walked to the, the, and then they look at me. And it's like, you know, you're okay, not supposed to. You're wayward. I, mine are literally my eyes. Yeah, no, no. My, my, <laughs> mine is like the cognitive process. It's like, <laughs> the. <laughs> yes. I was like, the, the. No, no. Um. Yeah. So I, I like, I never. <laughs> you're like, this. Yes. where's my. <laughs> no, where where are our texts? <laughs> so what did I send you last? I'm like getting G and T stuff. You're like, what's a G? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is me. <laughs> like you <laughs> said, awesome. Ah, <laughs> uh, what's ah? Uh? Okay, so ah yeah. uh is the sensation. Oh my god. Do you want to know I how? I have to go take a shit. <laughs> Oh. Do you want to know how crazy it is the way that I look like when I read it? He's lo- calling me dad. Wait, which oh, is- wait, oh, wait. That was in reference to the quote he sent me l- yeah, I actually, five seconds. I actually did. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, so, why is he calling yes, you dad? Yes. No, this was, this and, was, this and, was and a so like, hyperbolic. Frame. Yes. And so, the, so like the weird thing is, um, I, I can't read in a library because when I'm reading, this is the way I'm literally reading. Yeah, like. <laughs> yes, that, that is me. Really, yeah, that's really a weird listening experience. <laughs> no, I've seen you read. Yeah. No, and it's, it's not like that for me. I'm just like, I yeah. just do this. I'm like, fuck, my eyes hurt. So it's like, no, no. Me is like the whole, <laughs> the process is that laborious. And so if I I'm reading a my novel. Eyes don't work. <laughs> So if I'm reading a novel, <laughs> that is me reading a novel. So how can I cry or feel joy when it's like... But when it's being read to you... It's different. It was yeah. like, okay, now, now I could just like close my eyes and... Really? So here's... Idea. So let's talk about the movie really quick. And yeah. I, I have attempted really, really briefly to watch the film made. Yeah. So it was written in 1992. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, there was kind of a anti-communist movement of filmmakers. Okay. Um, in cinematography in China. Um, in China at the same time because Mao died and then 10 years after in like the late yeah. 80s it really started to open up yeah. and they're, living in a communist country as an artist you really can't be right yeah as a, as a producer of art that's why like good <gasps> sorry good art is still made in the East Asia when it's not in the US right yeah, which yeah. we've just said but like even just visual art is like better there yeah um, oh yeah definitely Definitely better. Their aesthetics are much, much more coherent. Yeah. And I think people recognize that intuitively. Um, but um, he, a director came to him to adapt the book mm-hmm. and they worked in, so Yu Hua, and I don't remember the guys. Um, let me look it up really quick just so I sound more intelligent. Um, it's To Live. It was released in 1994. If I remember correctly, that says 1894. I get really torn between autocorrect or not on my phone. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not rated. Is oh, Yimo Jang mm-hmm. is the Yimo Jang or Jang Yimo is yeah, the. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the the tones. I don't know. If, yeah, yeah, do you know yeah. much about the Chinese? Not too much. So no. there is just yes, yeah. It's xie xie. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Xie xie. Xie xie. Xie xie. Because it's xie xie. Yeah. But when you have two descending tones at the yeah. same time, you go, shit, shit. I don't know. E- so like, e- R- so like, um, <laughs> Tai Tai is like wife. So like Amanda's your Tai Tai, but like it's, it's technically Tai Tai, which is funny because the, the character used it's double character Tai Tai. It's this thing. Yeah. That's literally the character in Japanese to become fat. No, nice. yeah. <laughs> but, but there's there i don't know what the t- so there's in chinese there's so if i go ma it's horse ma is the question ending ma is like a horse mm-hmm. it's 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 there's ma 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 and ma and the like each one of those things means a different thing. So it's very so when you hear him go like tapu how tapu it's it's literally because Yeah, yeah, I mean the tones something. all doing different things. I don't know what the tones are on yeah. this this guy's mate. Um I should have studied Chinese instead of Japanese. Um <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um Yi Mo Zhang. Wait, can I let me yeah. really quick I I'm being autistic, I'm sorry. So it's 
So it's Zhang Yi Mo. Zhang Yi Mo is the director of this film. <laughs> I do get the tones. Um, yeah. He, in collaboration with Yu Hua, like made the film. Yeah, yeah. And it's actually did a very good job in the post in the translation notes of this of the audiobook. Mm. Explained that the the film is quite a bit more anti communist in its bent mm, and more yeah. hopeful and less existential. So okay, it's it's yeah, a yeah. different. I I really should watch it all the way through. Yeah. Just to compare it, but I also don't want to be annoyed. Mm. I just I love I love this work of fiction so much that I just don't mm-hmm. I don't want to be irritated yeah, yeah even even tangentially i just it's so yeah. good that i just don't yeah yeah <laughs> i don't want to feel like that yeah um it's quite a bit more you know that that's like um one of the one of the the frequent th- lines in the book that's the other thing is it's, it's very poetic and it's reassertion of lines so yeah. it's like the chicken will grow up and become a goose and the goose becomes an ox you know it's just yeah, like yeah. The whole there's this the sequence of the growth of certain animals into other animals as a, as a as a metaphor for the production of wealth and stuff, mm-hmm. and the ox becomes communism is a thing that's said in the yeah yeah in the film that's never the the book is not overtly political in any way mm-hmm. it's anti communist only tangentially mm-hmm. only descriptively in the way that communism literally sucked for people. It's not a. Yeah. It's not an anti-communist creed. It yes, was anti-communist yeah. enough to be banned in China when it was released, but right, it's yeah. not a. It's yeah. just a, a a human mythos. But it's, it's not as tell off. That right, was yeah. literally written in a communist mm-hmm. context. So it, it it's yeah 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so there there is a little bit of an element of that, but the film was much more overtly mm. anti-communist, and I think that the director was much more anti-communist in his. Yeah, his practice, which I think at the time, especially in the '90s during yeah. the Reformation, was like kind of the thing to do. Yeah, everybody was anti-communist in 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 the '90s in China. Yeah, yeah. As far as artists go. Yeah. Um. But I the mo- the film is much more politically charged. Mm. Like the the film ends with everybody around the like the the grandson is still alive, the daughter's still alive, and they're all around Jia the the mother. Mm. And I'm like, that's not right. That yeah. doesn't facilitate what the book was about. And I just yeah, yeah. I don't have a whole lot of interest in really engaging with it because right, I, yeah. I I I understand that the author was involved in the adaptation, mm-hmm. but it just doesn't sit right with me that literally not everyone died right, the fact right. that everybody died is such a quintessential yeah detail it's like the it's it's literally the overarching narrative is that everybody dies and that life is suffering get over it right yeah if everybody doesn't die i don't know what mm-hmm. meaning it would have it's probably changed. It's probably changed in the scene. I should I should watch yeah. it because I'm such a fan of the. Yeah, yeah, uh, but even yeah. just to critique it, right? Like I yeah. should I should watch it because because I, I really do think one, um, one thing we always have to keep in mind. Yeah, I think that this is for everybody is that, um, you know, film adaptations by nature. Because of the medium is literally yes, different. I, have, I actually had that thought a couple days ago. Yeah, you it can't di- be that irritated. You can't. Yeah, because it is. It's different. It's it's like saying I prefer. You know, it, not, not prefer. I mean, your preference fine is it, your preference, but it's it's like saying the song Gran Torino is better than the movie. It's like <laughs> <laughs> it's like okay, well, no, because the mediums are different. And so, like, a we novel... should cover that film as an episode. Yeah, we should. We should. Or a professional. I would probably care about the professional. No, but anyways, Leon the professional. Yeah. Let's do an episode on Leon the professional. That would be so fucking yes, cool. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. But but yeah, and so I, I think a lot of times it depends what somebody encounters first. Yeah. And so if they encounter the novel first, 
Um, and let's say the person prefers storytelling in, yeah. in a novel sense, yeah. they're going to enjoy that better than the movie. Yeah. It's because that medium speaks to them more. They could imagine it. They could immerse themselves into the characters more because, uh, because the, the, the interaction with a novel is profoundly yeah. different than a movie. Yeah. Yeah, um, but, absolutely. But, but a film adaptation is, is direct, yeah. it's exactly that. It's an adaptation. And then you're condensing a, a story that takes eight hours in an audiobook to like a two hour movie. But it's so short. I just, I just. Yes. No, no. What, what I mean is that then the movie is different. Like a movie yeah. is about the visuals, yeah. it's about the, the yeah. music. It's, it, you That's know, why yeah. I say a two live miniseries yes. would be spectacular. Yeah, yeah. You, um, you probably could I just, could I don't say think, I don't yeah. think that. Because what I've said, what it's, it's 200, it's like 215 pages or something. Yeah. It's a very, it's very short Yeah, yeah. relative to other works that are as, um, philosophically powerful yes, as it yeah, is. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it, it but would not be incredibly difficult to adapt it. It wouldn't, but, some, but for an yeah. hour, couple hour thing, it just, mm-hmm. You you literally don't have time to depict everyone who dies. You don't dying yeah. in the proper and, and, amount of time. And, and, and yes, and, and, that, <laughs> and that's what I mean is that the, you know the the function of a film is different than that of a novel. Yeah. Because the medium is different, so everything about it is different. And sometimes you can make it better, even if it's shorter. Do you want more? So like um, that's good. You know, like like there's there's a big debate between whether um Saint Mel's uh. <laughs> Um, Hamlet was better than Kenneth Branagh's Hamlet. So Kenneth, Kenneth Branagh, you would say his Hamlet was, in terms of its scope, trying to encompass the actual Hamlet play more mm. fuller. Yeah. You know, it was longer, it was, you know, and everything about it. But those who, those who understand filmmaking more normally appreciate St. Mel's more because, because as a film... It was a much he, better. He has film. such an incredible understanding of screenplay. Yes, he does. Yeah, um, that he could condense a, a story into two hours, and it's it's a better film than than Brenna's <laughs> film is. Uh, yeah, and so. What is the what's the what's uh, this is this is a huge deep cut that has really uh, the only the only reference it makes to what we're talking about yeah. is the fact we're talking about Shakespearean adaptations <laughs> yes yeah, yeah yeah or film adaptations what's the uh, I just have to Google it you're not gonna know yeah you don't like Shakespeare at all right I'm not a fan of Shakespeare no it's so funny you sh- we should literally have my mom on again to talk to you about Shakespeare oh really does she love him. I'm between both of you. She <laughs> would, she dies for it. Oh, and really? then you don't care for it. Yeah. And I like, get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, it's the Hey, Nani, Nani one that came out in the nineties. Hey, Nani, no, Hey, Nani, Nani. It was a film adaptation that was, that had like incredible. Uh, I literally, I'm literally saying, hey, nonny, nonny line from Shakespeare. It's from, <laughs> is it Much Ado About Nothing? Mm-hmm. You're a freaking English major, right? She knows, she likes what is it? Yeah. Do you remember this film I'm talking about? Oh. Much she, a- she knows the Shakespeare play probably. Though. Much Ado About Nothing. Yeah. Um, I'm also, I'm also Anglo, so it's like in my DNA kind of to like appreciate this stuff. I know, are, yeah. Which me, I just, I get, I don't know. It, it, originally published in 1600 so so you know how i'm explaining how hard it is for me to read right yeah <laughs> and so then you give shakespeare. me shakespeare it is like <laughs> it's literally it is it's, the it's english thing. language games yes from 400 years ago. i know and so me reading that i'm just like are you adaptations just fucking punch me in the face i'll have more joy out of 1799 that. i don't care about this mm-hmm <laughs> Tell me where the movie. I'm literally talking. I'm just 1964. Don't know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it's got Michael Keaton, Robert Leonard, mm. Keanu Reeves, Emma Thompson, Denzel Washington. Why is Denzel Washington in a Shakespeare movie? Because <laughs> it's the 90s. <laughs> 
Yeah. Throw a black man in yeah, the Shakespeare a play. It's fine. And, it's and, fine. And, and no, Hawaiian, nobody dude. will know it. Somebody that just, you know, that wasn't Bill and Ted's. Just put him in there. <laughs> it's very Shakespearean. Man, nobody give a fuck about <laughs> English canon. Yeah. Oh, man. It's all white in a Shakespeare play. He's half white, essentially. <laughs> is he half? No. Oh, he's just okay. one of the whitest black actors oh, okay. to ever live. <laughs> yeah, that was... I remember when I was... When I had hey, to do nonny, sh- Shakespeare classes, and they would make me read that. It it was it always was a disaster. <laughs> just, yeah. It's one of the worst no, things. No, so this is interesting. Do. This is... Yeah. It's, so the thing that the English did, and I think that... So this is something from the last episode we might discuss for a second. Yeah. I don't know what... I don't think she touched on it at all. Um, English, like ang- Anglo, German yeah. to a lesser degree, but especially English literature and poetry yeah. had such an intense focus on the... What's the word? I don't want to say linguistic balance because Spaniards did that better, mm-hmm. but the prose maybe. No, there was just a, a concern with the physical weight of mm. language. Okay, yeah. In that, it's just there's something beautiful about it. Mm-hmm. You're not built for it. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. like in like like Shakespearean, like like like, what's the word? I feel like such an idiot. My mom's going to f- skewer me. I'll call her after this and be like, I don't remember what the word is for the kind of poetry you're talking about. <laughs> She'll be like, Bleh! and be like, I hung up posters in the bathroom. <laughs> um, what's the, um, no, no, no. It's, is it metric? Is it metric? No. Penta- I mean, he wrote an iambic pentameter. I love English. I, hey, I'm sorry that that pains you physically, but um, <laughs> yeah, they like like English really invented the po- the poetry in metric, like li- yes, like like yeah. the dun to 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 dun like they they invent they really did something to solidify the lyric quality of mm. like poetry and prose that that hadn't really been done until the, since the Greeks Yeah, yeah. that did occur in the English Renaissance, mm-hmm. but like, which is interesting actually. It is interesting. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Because in English, that's all you have mm-hmm. is the literally the weight of the way the words are said. Yeah. That because English very obviously, especially in prose, just, Eng- English is one of the most beautiful languages to read out loud because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it just sounds good. Mm-hmm. It's not technical at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I like French reading out loud, but anyways. True. I mean, just the, those yeah. like I think French and English are really, really quite related. Yeah, yeah. Um, French has a lot of influence on German and French. I think I mean, obviously. Right. Yeah. Anglo's and the Saxons. Anybody would be like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Duh. Like <laughs> yes. the but um. There's some there's something like all of the like like oh, what's the word? And of course we speak English, so of course all of the formal mm-hmm. techniques I know are English. Yes, duh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like there there's a there's a rhythm. There's something they understood about or not understood that they they focused on rhythm in a way that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, which 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 is funny because I I think. Um, Historically speaking, it happened both with the French and the English as well. They're very, very. Tired. They are. Yeah. That's why they hate each other so much. Yes. Really yeah. Yeah. Um. Keep talking. Yeah. No. No. Yeah, that, that's all. Yeah. I have with that one. Yeah. Because I, I, I do agree with you. I do think they, um, the English language, definitely. And that's that's a credit I'd like to. I, I, our Polly episode irritated a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> why because it was it has accurate? alienated yes because yeah, yeah. it was accurate but yeah. like a thing that i really think i tried to articulate in the poly yeah. episode is that her intuition that english literature is good mm-hmm. is right mm-hmm. it's just not 
it's descriptive purely, mm-hmm. which is f- fictional. It's fiction. Fiction is right, just yes. descriptive. Yeah. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but to attribute any metaphysical value, or n- n- let's not say metaphysical value, because that wall has metaphysical value. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I feel like that's not fair. Um, to treat sexual persona like a f- work of metaphysics is wrong. Because it's obviously not. It's just obviously not. Yeah, it's yeah. just like an interesting description okay, of the I, history. I, I have to know what what problem would somebody have with what we said about Polya? Like, in, in all honesty, like, what issue would someone have with it? Well, the the problem is that we analyzed it critically, rationally. Yeah, ra- critically. Yeah. So rationally, it goes analyzed. back to what I was saying earlier <laughs> <laughs> that people get mad when somebody's rational and they have a oh, big you, dick. Well, they said that we got her thesis wrong. How do we get the Multiple. thesis wrong? There's no thesis. Yes, and so we how did we how did we get that wrong then? <laughs> what was I, What was my attribution? It says that, that the, the thesis was most vaguely that most artistic inspiration comes from mm-hmm. the conf, the the sexual confusion of the artist or so, like mm-hmm. I feel like that's a especially after being a, a week or two out from this. Do you mm-hmm. agree with that? Like that, what she's describing is the well, internal. I, 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 think, I think the lack of thesis is, is, is the, then it's difficult for, for anyone to really. No, but do you agree with me but, that but, that's but, kind but, of what you walked away with? Right. Yes. That but, she but, did a lot of describing the way acad- in which ac- academically, I, I would say what her basic thesis was was just um, that she was describing um, the way the sexual or, or the erotic was displayed in art throughout history. And I don't know why that would irritate somebody. Right, yes. Because, because what I what... I have actually been told by multiple people who are like you got her thesis wrong. What she actually said is that the history of art is characterized by personality. Mm-hmm. Through us, what uh, she calls sexual persona and I'm like, "Okay, so that means mm-hmm. exactly what we said." Like what do you like what do you Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I think maybe like, they're just saying that that you said more than what her thesis was because her thesis was a little more broad. Her well, thesis it's just was not just, a thesis. It's just a description. Yeah. She described. Yeah. yeah Accurately which, and yeah. interestingly. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But there's just there's just not thesis. Yeah. Um, it's just very funny that irritated people to the degree that we partially caused a schism in the Twitter universe, <laughs> <laughs> which is the purpose of the show. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. We course. didn't need to maintain any relationships with anybody. But yeah. Um, yeah, but for someone having an issue with, I mean, I just, sorry. I don't, just yeah. tell me, okay, okay, I got a thesis wrong. The thesis is art is displayed through personality by way of the sexual persona or whatever she describes. Yeah. That, that's a, that's a Wikipedia way of saying what I said. Like, what do you, like, what? Right, yeah. You're yeah. just, you're reading the Wikipedia article. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but 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 even if somebody wants to say that that was that that was your formulation of a thesis was incorrect, it doesn't make anything else that we said about the text incorrect. Mm-hmm. You know that, that that doesn't in any way nullify um, the fact that her her lack of arguments, her lack of reason, mm-hmm. um, her her inability to really to articulate i think anything beyond a descriptive uh i i guess uh, sexual persona through history mm-hmm. without making any strong claims mm-hmm. of its causal relations yeah. i mean none of that becomes yeah. nullified if even if somebody were to disagree with your formulation of her thesis well there there really isn't a thesis so that's a very hard for me to well, how are you defining? Because 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 normally when you say a thesis, they just mean like what is the central topic of the paper? Oh, I'm thinking argument. What's the central argument of the? Yes, and, and so that that's the that's the difficulty is that she doesn't really construct make an, an argument. Well, she she. So so like the, the no, thesis. No, we is talked just like about ta- that yeah. last time. Is that the, the first chapter starts mm-hmm. to formulate an argument about the she way formulates premises, but but an argument requires mm-hmm. two premises and a conclusion. Yes, I know. So and that so. the problem is that her premises in the f- initial part mm-hmm. yeah. are very interesting mm-hmm. about the way, especially. I really think the way in which the f- the feminine 
is dominated by nature mm-hmm. no, or what she calls nature in a way that the masculine never is, is kind of interesting. Yeah. Like she, she really goes in depth about like uh, menstrual cycles and women, yeah, how yeah. that Im- imparts on feminine experience, a dimension that men never have to experience. Yeah. Like childbirth does something to a woman that just doesn't have a male analog. Right. And that's, could be true. I, yes, I kind yeah. of agree with that on the surface level, but the fact that it's just that and then pfft, like, yeah, then, then talk about literature. It's just yes, like that's and then just shitting out information about the sexual persona. Her it's research like, is impressive. Yeah, it's ex- this fine. long. Yes, fine. Impairing. The research is impressive, but if anybody has an issue with that, if, if if I was her professor, right, and she was a student, and and somebody handed me that work, the one thing that I would say to this student would be like, "What is your argument?" There's no so argument. What? There's yes. no argument. So you made no argument. And the thing, the, a lot of these people were mm-hmm. like, well, you need to read it. And I'm like, I read it halfway three times or no, what? I, yeah. I, 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 seven or eight times. Mm-hmm. I've, I've read it halfway. I get yes. to, I get to the modern period and I'm like, I don't under, I, because there is no argument. There's no argument. It's just descriptive. Yes. Just read a novel. Yes. Read yes. to live. You'll get more. You'll <laughs> yes, learn you more about more the way the world works. <laughs> yes. And about a 200 beauty. Page yes. Novel. About beauty and the erotic. I would learn more from there because in her <laughs> descriptions, again, she makes no causal claim. She has no premise and conclusion. And so, uh, I mean, the one thing that, that I think listeners would have to understand is first they have to understand what the fucking argument is. An argument requires two premises that has a middle term that relates the two premises together, then you have a major term and a minor term yeah. and a conclusion that combines both the major term and the minor term together in order to in order to say that this was derived from these premises. Yeah. But if you were to sit there and just give premise after premise after premise after premise after premise that have no relation, is Should it, we it, do that right now? It's can, as, I, can I do that right now? Yes. That wall is made of faux brick. Mm-hmm. This camera's on a tripod. That table is made of fake wood. Amanda is sitting there with her finger on our camera switchers. Um, this bottle of gin is 55% full. This bottle of tonic water is empty. This has melted ice in it. That wall's red. There's a bunch of stacks of soundproofing foam. You're in a cardigan. I'm wearing a fleece. I'm wearing a gray mock turtleneck. You're wearing a very... You don't have the... Do you have the wife beater on today? Yeah, I do actually. Is it black? Yeah. People have described that as looking like a like a sports bra underneath okay, shirts that are too low cutting. Good, good. Um, this table, I stained this table. Yes. I I sanded down a table I found in my garage and stained this mm-hmm. and did all the work to make this thing. There's a heater yes. here. Yeah. This is laminate flooring. Um, there is a piece of uh, drywall sitting over there. Um, there's a black chair. There's a black chair here between us that the camera can't see that's another fact yeah it's a my full compu- leather chair no my computer it. sits here i have a mm-hmm. bottle of rien intense incense <laughs> that sells beautiful my pink my phone has a pink case on it um we ironed this logo no jeremy himself <laughs> ironed this logo onto these tumbler glasses there's ice in here i have two straws that are apparently gay to use there's a trash can there there's a battery camera battery is that a that's a that was an that's a Sony epe6 no oh, no, no that's, that's a that's a, a cannon, cannon battery a cannon um amanda took off her choker thing yes. her thing there um we have a pair of um the airpods apple airpods is that generation two yes okay so we have our so that that's our camera switcher and we have a hard drive plugged into that that's that hard that thing records all of our the video we record onto that hard drive it's it's super easy <laughs> to process that because all of the camera footage gets put into one file instead what what did we have to do before that so before that we had to um take we recorded on all cameras separately and then jeremy had to spend hours taking all of that audio or not audio the 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 video Mm -hmm. because video is different than audio um and splice all of that together over hours and that was just two times consuming so we spent what 599 dollars on that thing right yes which takes up to four hdmi cables from cameras up to four different cameras um mini HDMI from the camera because they're contemporary into a, a regular HDMI into that thing, which then broadcasts our video uh, feed onto a screen that Amanda, who is Jeremy's wife, how long have you been married? 
2004. Is that 15 years? 16 years. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Um, that broadcasts a feed onto a screen that, um, that Amanda watches literally the entire time. Is that impressive? Yeah. Can we yeah. say that's impressive? What other, how are the, how else can we describe that? Um, impressive, loyal yeah, to us. Um, it, to me, speaks of a respect for the thing that Jeremy and I are doing, right? Mm -hmm. I think Amanda gets it. She's wearing a black jacket, by the way. Um, that, so she controls that, and then while that's being switched, um, it records onto a hard drive. And what that looks like is she has multiple, she has one screen <laughs> like this <laughs> that displays the one she's on specifically. There's four buttons she switches. And then there's four little screens down here that would display up to four screens that she would record and she would use the button to switch between those two things. Um, and then that records to that hard drive, but she's also sitting on that black chair. And do you have a blanket on? You have a coat. You're, but you're always covered in a, in a blanket of some, is that because you're cold? So she's cold all the time. Um, there's a door over there. So the studio, Jeremy, I mean, I built 20, 10%. You built 90%. That's cool. Um, we're dedicated. Yes. We yeah. have a ton of lights that we've sourced. Um, there's drywall up here now. And there's what? How, how much percent of the ceiling is covered in soundproofing stuff? Um, eight to 10? Yeah. Okay. So I have just recorded Contra Gentiles Personae. <laughs> um, published 2021. Yes. What does that mean? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, don't critique it. Just listen to it. All right, man. Just listen, just to, listen it. to it, yeah, and, just, 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 and you'll get something out I of know, it. I just, know. Just you'll get it. Yes. There are such geniuses that <laughs> yes. every single word they wrote will divinely inspire you to understand what they said. <laughs> Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, that was a beautiful display of what you did. I it's mean, yeah. so much meaning. Yes. So many theses I mean, that I just proposed. <laughs> and so, yeah, when you say there is no thesis, that is accurate. <laughs> in that, in that, that there was nothing really said in the end. It was like you just... You, you, it's so descriptive and the description fine was a lot of research you could say you would well know written. exactly what it's like sitting in this room yes you know yes. exactly what amanda's doing yes we you know you exactly made... how these glasses came to be yes. you know what that wall is made of yeah. you know we built the studio yes but you made no argument <laughs> and and that's the thing that, that, that <laughs> when we criticize these writers this is exactly what we're saying it's like okay fine the description was beautiful, but what was the point? The fact that Polya can look back into history and intuit the facts of what was going on yes. is impressive. Yes. She said nothing about it. She said, exactly, yeah. That's fine. That's, but whatever. Yeah. You can enjoy so, so, that so, so and you can enjoy the prose. In the end. It's a meaningless book. Yeah. Um, I'm really glad we talked about sexual persona yeah. in light of what happened over the last week. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe people had an issue with what we were saying. I mean, fuck. They, we did, were... they didn't listen to it. Yeah. They really, they're just, just, just Yeah, no just trying, trying to be as, uh, as um, courteous to the text as possible. We did such an incredible job. Yes. So do we have any closing uh, thoughts about to live? No, I think we, we covered that one really well, actually. <sighs> I think we got the point. I think yeah. I don't want to spin out on the sexual person. <laughs> yes. Okay. This is one week, one, maybe 18 minute spiel on how irritated we are that anyone would misinterpret what we said. Yeah. Without directly calling anyone out. Yes. I yeah. covered my mouth and said it quietly. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, anytime yeah. I say, <laughs> um, would be yes. quiet. I don't yeah. think the microphone would have picked that up. You dropped the N bomb at an hour and twelve seconds, and I will do the the cork pop. So. <laughs> but it ended with an A this time. Does that still count? You're a quarter black. Yeah. Okay, we're leaving it. Okay. Good. Um, can I read? Yes. Okay. So, all in all, Jeremy. I don't know. I shouldn't be surprised because I, th I think that I know it's a, a comprehensively human and mythological text mm -hmm. to really connect with anybody, any, yes, anybody yeah, yeah. who listens or reads to you to live by you, Hua, yeah. Y U space H U A for anybody who's going to yeah. buy it on Amazon or anything. Um, it's just very, very few works of fiction exist that are that 
Yeah. Comprehensively human, I think is the word. Um, it depicts human fragility and imperfection in a way that, I mean, obviously biblical text does it better, (laughs) but it's like different. Yes. Yeah. There's, I can't think if someone at some point in history, it will never happen. It will never be adapted to a miniseries because no one knows about it. Right. Yeah. Like any, any, no one, I've said it to many, many people and they're like, who is that? Yeah. Um, how did you encounter it in our life? I life? don't, that's, I was actually thinking. Remember, so yeah. what I think, that's actually an interesting thing to talk about for a second. Cause I actually earlier today specifically was thinking about how I found it. Yeah. I'm my two thoughts. I know I bought it at tidal wave. Oh, okay. Because I specifically remember. So what my first copy I have, I've owned three. What are you doing? Okay. <laughs> she's not even intoxicated and she talks like, stop it. Um, she's thinking, okay, no, just so I'm not going to look at a man. She's being distracting. <laughs> Gay men are distracted by women a lot. It's very, it's a, it's a Freudian thing maybe. Um, but, um, I remember specifically that the I was working at Lucky Wishbone and someone who worked there for a very brief time before she got fired went down to Sterling and borrowed my first copy and I remember the Tidal Wave sticker they put on stuff. Yeah. Um, this Tidal Wave in town is like a... Have you been to Powell's? You've never been to Portland, have you? Have you uh, when I was younger. Oh, yeah. okay. So Powell, Powell's would, I think, would have been there, but Powell's used books is a different thing. Okay. It's like a smaller Powell's used books kind of thing for anybody okay. who's, who's been to Portland. It's just like a used bookstore that has like everything. Mm-hmm. Um, it had that sticker on there. So I, I distinctly remember that I did not know about it before finding it. Mm. So Yuhua H. I'm trying to think of what, what I could have been looking for when I found it. Yeah. I, f- I remember finding it randomly in a bookstore and the cover was like interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cause I was really into fiction about the East from the same time period. Yeah. Tournament. Oh, sorry. I got to look another thing up. Um, Vietnam, Viet, sorry, Vietnam, war fiction there's another book i read that's really amazing um i don't i don't know if i'm gonna find it um in in viet war these are all american um there's uh, well actually in high school it started in the high school i went through this phase where i was reading like um japanese fiction written from the perspective of people in japan during world war ii Okay, uh, yeah. Like Requiem, Requiem is a spectacular. So, so here I'm, I'm giving you a little bit of a personal yeah. biography, a little bit. Requiem, Japan novel. Um, Cause so what actually so really going back to the the Ghibli movies thing, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Grave of the Fireflies really sparked in me a. Because we we've talked about it, I really resonate with like narratives of suffering mm-hmm. more than most people do. Yeah. Um, did you ever watch Grave of the Fireflies? Mm-hmm. It's yeah. literally about a. He's twelve or thirteen. Um. And his, or no, he's not even that old. Maybe ten or eleven. It's a boy whose mother is burned to death during the fire bombings in Japan, which mm-hmm. no one in the U.S. talks about. Yeah. There's yeah. the there's the atomic bombing. But the firebombing was, they literally burned down half of Tokyo yeah. with incendiary bombs wow, okay. over raids and raids and raids and raids yeah, and raids. Yeah. And it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a narrative of suffering, just yeah. suffering. There's a beautiful scene where after the, after the little girl dies of starvation, cause her like 11 year old brother can't find enough food for her. Yeah. They do this beautiful little narrative thing where it's after the war has ended mm-hmm. And the aristocrats play some opera and it's just a single aria with no background music over the little girl doing what she would do around their little bomb shelter Mm. 
while the brother was away finding food and then she died. It's beautiful. It's yeah. just, it's one of the first experiences I remember where I'm like, wow, I really engage with narratives about suffering. Yeah. yeah. But, um, there was a thing and then it went to the Viet, like Vietnam. I don't, I have the book. I should find it. Mm. You, you might enjoy it. Yeah. Cause the Asians did something about the narrative. Like they, they, they did the existential movement, right? Yes. In yeah, the yeah. second half of the 20th century. Um, is it lost brothers or something? I don't remember what it was called, but, um, it's just, about, it's about someone, a Vietnamese person living through the turmoil of the Vietnamese war and not knowing what the hell was going on on either side mm-hmm. and just being yeah. a person. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I just remember they have a certain way they would design the covers. And I remember when I got to live, I was like, Oh, this looks good. And then I wrote, I read it and I was like, this is my favorite thing. I've ever read. Yeah, yeah. And then I went and I read brothers is another one that he wrote. Mm-hmm. Um, I've read some, uh, some, a bunch of his short stories from the kind of the first third of his career, China in 10 words. And I just like, yeah, it's him and Solzhenitsyn are like my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Like Google, Gulag archipelago guy. His novels are my favorite. Yeah. Cancer ward and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm just glad you liked it. <laughs> I really was like elated. I was like, even if we don't talk about it at all, yeah. I'm just glad you, you <laughs> saw the value in it, but I'm um, Requiem really quick. Mm-hmm. Um, is a Japanese novel written in the eighties from the perspective it's by it, Shizuko Go. So Go Shizuku, mm-hmm. Shizuko, Go Shizuko, I think yeah. it's not well known here at all. Yeah. Um, but it's about a high school girl who during the second world war in Japan was all of her family died and she was forced to work in the factories. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so it literally goes between the narrative and like the meta narrative scenes of the girl dying of starvation and thirst and okay, yeah. maggot infestation in a bomb shelter. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really, um, that's a beautiful, it's way more nihilistic than to live, but that's okay. another one of my favorite books of all time. Yeah. It's also super short yeah yeah east asians have an art for really short novels yeah um but anyway should i just read yeah yeah okay so it's i i won't break i don't think i'll break down in tears but (laughs) to live um the last the way that he read so this is the fugue has written his Oh, let me read my favorite. So your life is given to you by your parents. If you don't want to live, you have to ask them first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just like, um, mm, oh, that was one of the, th- I tweeted that earlier. No matter how lucky a person is, the moment he decides he wants to die, there's nothing left to keep him alive. There's nothing that will keep him alive. That's when Chung Gun, um, killed himself mm. after promising he wouldn't cause he was being beaten by the, yeah. what are they called? The Red Guard. Mm-hmm. Uh, dang. Oh, I have to find the Fishers of Memory quote. One second. Sorry. Fishers. Fishers of Memory. I just want to read my favorite. It's just, I, I'm not going to get to work. <sighs> yeah, we were Fishers of Memory waiting on the banks of time. Or we were, yeah, we were fisher, Fishers on the memory. So, wow. <laughs> we were fishers of memory waiting on the banks of time and waiting for the past to swallow the bait. And just like, there's little like poetic little quotes. Yeah. But let me, let me really as a conclusion, we'll say bye afterwards. If you don't have anything else to say. No. Yeah. So this is after he describes. So Fugue en- ends his story and they part ways and it becomes night time and he just watches Fugue and the ox walk mm-hmm. away and sway in the same way yeah, yeah. all the way off into the distance. And he says, as the black night descended from the heavens, I knew that in the blink of an eye, I would witness the death of the sunset. I saw the exposed firm chest of the vast earth. Its pose was one of calling of beckoning. And just as a mother beckons her child, so earth beckoned the coming of night. And that's the last line. Yeah. Anyway, bye. Bye.